everybody. Okay, this is this is uh, a redo. Let's see if we can get a better connection this time uh, between me and and Flavio. We we had a horrible, an absolutely horrible connection on that first try. So let me see if I can get uh, Flavio back in here, and we can continue the conversation. Um, so. get Flavi in. Looks like the connection's better, at least from this end. So for those that don't know, uh, we are talking to Flavia Drago, who did uh, Gustavo, um, as well as uh, Lalo the Perfect Witch, and Vlad, and uh, even a uh, Monsters Play Peekaboo. And so, um, we are, let me see if I can get Bobby in here again. Okay, invite is sent. There we go. Hopefully this works. Cross our fingers. Although, let's see. I'm going to cross them as best I can. Here, and cross my toes. Cross my other fingers. And cross my other toes. That this gives us a good connection this time. All right, Flavia, I've, I've sent the invite. If it, yeah, okay. I Need to resend. There we go. Hopefully, let's cross our fingers. Cross our fingers. I got them crossed. I got them crossed. There we go. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It looks good on my phone. I'm just waiting yes. to see. It looks good on the on the iPad. Okay. I think we're good. So far, we're good. good. Yeah. Yes. So, so um, again. Thank you for, for those that are just now tuning in. Um, but thank you for joining me today. This is this is huge. Um, uh, my wife and I have been huge fans of yours uh, and seeing, seeing all these books on the shelves and sort of how cute and in particular the colors that you work with, your mm -hmm. palette and all of these. Like I was reading through Layla earlier today again just to sort of take a look at it. And some of the like the, the color choices in particular towards the back of the book there is one spread. Uh, let's see if I find it. Where was it? Oh, this one. Where I all the colors in here are also like desaturated, but also kind of oddly vibrant in a way that I couldn't figure out. Or like these like sort of desaturated uh, like yellows and stuff in the background, which I always hear as being like, you know. Uh, you got to push color, color, color on, mm -hmm. on like vibrant. And yet it still also works with all these like fluorescents on the cover. And to me, it's really fascinating your, your color use. So um, I want to talk uh, a lot about sort of your process as we go along uh, today, but um, let's get into the, into the heart of what we're going to be doing, which is uh, I already know what you're going to be working on. Cause we talked about it ahead of time. So we're going to be doing some scary cute, Yes, Whatever. I, I was thinking something that. fantastical and weird for a okay. Uh, okay, and then um, the the big question for me, because when I look at the books, all of them say uh, mixed media, mm -hmm. which could be anything and everything. And mm -hmm. so what, what does mixed media mean and what materials are we going to use today? Ah, well... Mm. Mixed media means that I usually use ink and all of my artwork, I do it in black and white. I could, I suppose I could go get my, get my originals and show them to you. Wait, everything is done in black and white and then you color it? Um, like in Photoshop, it's kind of not very quick. <laughs> it takes ages. I need to select okay. basically every single item and color it on Photoshop. <laughs> so like is so like all the grainy textures and things are done with like pencil and crayons and things of the sort and then and then you separate that out as a layer. Yes. Oh. Um but oh. I use two two or three different like real layers. I have I make by hand a layer for the background and then I make another layer for the you know the body and the hair and then I have another layer for the lines and then I have another layer for the lights and the shading so it, it's 
lots of lots of layers <laughs> yeah laborious there you go uh that that blew my mind because i figured i mean i was trying to figure out honestly like looking at these i was trying to figure out okay so you have things like i was looking at let's go to layla real quick and just reference uh in here i was wondering how you maintained let me see if i can find a good reference of it okay here as an example how you maintained the like texture in the hair and then against the, the texture of the chair and how you got the edges to be so crisp and so clean but now that makes total sense that you're using photoshop and so you you're using texture against texture i was like man you're really having to like get in there with these textures and colored pencils or whatever it was you were using to manage it but now it makes total sense for me to actually get how you made this um yeah uh, so how long did it take you to make this then? Uh, I think the last scene uh, for Leila, I was working on that for maybe a week and a half in total. Okay. Just the art work. So yeah, I sit down and work. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Basically, like average, a spray takes a week. Uh, if it's very complicated, if it's if it has lots of details or characters, it can take yeah. longer than that. Yeah, and Leila took a while because it's always the three sisters yeah. and they need to look consistent throughout the book and they need to have the same proportions and then the same details. And I was like, just, I was thinking, why did I do a dress with stars and the <laughs> tiny shoelaces? Are you scanning every piece individually? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I did. Uh, so my first book was uh, a book called Fruit Bowl, and it was very similar. Like I did every arm separate and every eye separate. And at the end of it, it drove me crazy. Now, it works for you. So I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to yuck your yum. Uh, but to me, that just blows my mind that the the amount of effort that goes into making it and it looks beautiful and no one like i didn't even tell i couldn't tell from the beginning that like oh this is photoshop and it was all done as separate black and white pieces but that's fascinating i hope yeah. that i hope that, <laughs> i'll show you let me show you yeah. okay do you have some uh, that'd be amazing I, let me go switch camera so this is a rope uh it's basically Basically, it basically comes from a tiny, my sketches are tiny, yeah. tiny, tiny. And then I scan them and I blow them up and print them. And then I use, um, what's it called? Like a light box yep. to trace the layers. So this is one of the scenes for Vlad. And I've made two different layers for it. So here we have like the backgrounds all of the backgrounds like this is crayon and this is crayon with a little bit of ink you can see the textures are there and um, this is just different types of pencils with different softnesses and thicknesses as well i just really like the effect that i get and then i can edit everything which makes me enjoy the process a lot i think if i was just working with gouache or just working with watercolor i would feel very stressed especially if, if then i need to make changes or edits in one image i think this is a very convenient way of doing it <laughs> and sometimes i don't even use all of the layers that i've been yeah. working on but uh, this works for me so far so this is the way in which i'd like to do things so for the most part it's only only like two or three layers it depends sometimes like the scenes which have backgrounds sometimes have maybe five layers like oh, that's not in my mind you had layers upon layers upon layers well five handmade layers oh, okay. then, <laughs> <laughs> like a, a hundred uh, no, like thousands of layers on Photoshop. Oh no! Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> we need to be very organized. Yeah. Do you label <laughs> them all? Please say you label them all. Sorry. In Photoshop, do you label your layers? I put them in fold in, in little fold folders. That makes okay. it easy. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's easier. 
I just said that I like, I, my mind is blown, but I'm also, I understand the, the, the reason for it. Like I understand the idea of being able to adjust colors and twist things along the way and it makes it so much easier and probably makes your, your, uh, the publisher Candlewick very, very happy because you can hand off layers, every single yeah. layer that goes into it. Um, that just fascinating. Mm -hmm. I never would have suspected. Okay. Usually um, I don't, deliver my files on layers because the images need to be flattened in a very yep. specific way so that the color works out when it's transformed from rgb to cymk yes CYMK, yeah the but at the same time like if you needed to you could hand off layers whereas i work completely flat and if they ask for layers they're either out of luck or i have to go in and do a lot of photoshopping to get anything that can be layered for them yeah. um so it's a uh, fascinating um okay so material wise today are you working black and white then no i was thinking of just doing some work with ink like sometimes when i'm not working working i do use ink gouache yep. maybe a little bit of watercolor that kind of oh. thing okay so that's what Good. i will be using i've just displayed lots of different things on my desk that i might be using i don't know i'll surprise myself <laughs> okay i yeah i have a bunch of color swatches here that i don't know exactly where it's going and i have some board and i know that i'm going to make something that's um uh scary cute and i'm not sure how much cute will play into it like how cute i can make something i don't i, I try but i don't know if it's going to be like where that threshold I think we can just go for weird and yeah, surreal. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I have, I have like a little drawing that I made, uh, a little doodle of something, and I'm not sure where it's going to go, but I, there's a texture thing I want to go for today. I want to try playing with some textures. So why don't we switch to our down shoots and we can just chat and, and make and talk and all that fun stuff. All right. Me, uh, if, I'm not as professional as you because I never do this. Uh, so bear with me while I kind of frame i'm sorry it's guys okay. no 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 hey we already had technical issues framing is nothing at this point um we uh one of the things that i uh, um i'm looking at i'm looking at like new camera rigs and stuff to set up at some point uh to make all this work uh and it will get more professional but i don't expect anybody to do what i'm doing here because i do it on a weekly basis and not everybody wants to do that um so as you set up here I'll, I'll watch it on my screen and make sure everything's going okay or that there's no major issues with with the setup um but yeah also uh, i kind of lose a screw the screw that keeps this from moving which is really annoying <laughs> uh, so it wiggles a little here and there. yeah it uh, does so i just need to be careful i'm not touching anything with my fat head did you, did you just say with your fat hand? Well, not with my head. Oh, well, I think it's in my, my fat hand. I didn't, I was like, where, where did that come from? No. Um, so tell me, tell me a little bit about sort of, you went through this master's program and obviously before that you had an interest in, in art making, but um, was it, was it picture books all along? Yeah. Like before you started the master's program or was that something that sort of, um, developed over time uh well i studied graphic design and i didn't know i wanted to to be an illustrator um i don't know i guess my interest i i, I always liked drawing and i didn't want to be like um i care i didn't study art because I didn't oh. want to have to end up making like mm, kind of, kind of pro projects in the fine arts world. Um, what I liked to, was to um, be able to tell stories. Sorry, I'm not making a lot of sense right now. <laughs> no, it, it takes, honestly, it takes a few uh, like minutes for people to be able to work and talk at the same time. So. Yeah. Uh, we are we are absolutely used to it. If you need to to sort of roll a little slower, that's a okay. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I just 
like drawing uh, that's what i what i've always liked i've always liked drawing and then i studied graphic design and then when i started working i kind of realized that i wasn't able to do what i wanted to do i had to just um, i don't know like i designed I did a lot of packaging and sometimes it involved doing boring things like touching up uh, images in Photoshop, but other times I was able to to draw, especially when we had to do, I don't know, like chocolate, um, like packages for chocolate or um, some Christmas things or Valentine's things. Yeah. I had I had to do a lot of drawing and that was really enjoyable so little by little I, I kind of just began to accept what it, that the thing I wanted to do was illustration and the thing that I liked the most was picture books and I didn't know really how to make a living out of that um, but I had some friends who told me oh you can you can go to a book fair you can do you can meet another you, you can meet some other illustrators and little by little I begin to become more interested in picture books. What, but initially I had no idea. What was it about picture books that drew you in though? Like was like for me the the impetus was uh I mean when I was in school I, I studied it for a, a hot second, but uh it was having kids and being around picture books all of a sudden sparked the the you know resurgence in my mind of wanting to do that was there was there something in particular about kids books that made you go oh that's exactly what i want to do uh i think i once um, i became acquainted with the work of some artists um in the there was a book um a bookshop near my university and they sell lots and lots of picture books okay and that's where I discovered the work of uh, basically Oliver Jeffers and Isol. Isol is an Argentinian illustrator. She's very, very famous in Mexico. Okay. And in Latin America, she won the Astrid Lindgren Award um, a couple of years ago. And I realized that they were doing things that were interesting. I realized that picture books and then I started making like I, I made I um, went uh, I, okay I applied in a contest for making a picture book and I realized wow this is really really difficult uh, how, how do you come up with with a story how do you make it work how do you make the artwork look consistent and I thought this is challenging and interesting and I really like um, this way, way of just expressing myself and I became really interested on it and that's what I wanted to do yeah. but for 10 years I tried and failed and tried and failed and then I went to different uh, places to try and become a children's picture book maker I went to, as I, as I was saying, I went to Barcelona. I did a course for about four months. And basically, I had a really great holiday. <laughs> 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 and I met, um, I met really amazing and interesting people as I was in Barcelona. They were very inspiring. I have a friend called Laura Lopez. She's a painter. And she would just sit down and start painting and it was honestly she's an impressive woman i i can't do what she does she sits down and she paints whereas me i need to do lots of sketches lots of planning and then when i'm happy with how something's gonna turn out i can begin yeah to even attempt to do something <laughs> um but that was that was inspiring did you 
Well, I'm sorry, you're, you're, when you said when you were in school or you were in university, was that in um, Mexico or was that? Where, yes. Where was... Yeah, okay. that, that's when I was in, in Mexico. Okay. Still in gotcha. Mexico City. It's, trying it's, to figure out what to do. It's interesting because I, 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 you know, I was wondering about sort of the, the, uh, the interest level in picture books in different regions around the world. And mm -hmm. you hear at this point, you hear a lot of stuff from the US and you hear a lot of stuff from Europe and you hear some stuff from Asia, but you don't hear a lot of like, um, Mexico or uh, Central America um, based publishers. Mm -hmm. all that often was that was that what you were look i mean you said oliver jeffers and it's i it's funny because i almost everybody is like yeah interested everybody. because mm -hmm. of oliver jeffers like he doesn't know or I'm, maybe he does know how much he has inspired uh kid lit authors and illustrators over time but um was there a different type of influence there than what you are seeing now in stores like the, the type of books or was it primarily just um, translated works? Uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean? Like, um, like were, were there a lot of Mexican um, authors and illustrators that were, that you were being influenced at that time or was it a lot of just like American publishers who have uh, imported and translated their works into uh, Spanish? Well, it's funny that you asked me that question. I was talking about that earlier on with my supervisor. I was telling him that in Mexico, well, in Mexico, there are very, very talented illustrators. Lots of them have won very important awards uh, inside Mexico and outside internationally. You can, um, you can think of Juan Palomino or Amanda Mijangos. Um, but the books that you see in the market are kind of a, a, a very limited selection because it's a very slow market in Mexico. I don't think, yeah. uh, like if you compare the UK or the US, in here you get to see new books published every month. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, in Mexico, I went these holidays and I'm not kidding, I went to the one of the biggest bookshops in Mexico City, and all they had was books by Oliver Jeffers, <laughs> um, which tells you that it's a market that maybe sells what they know it's going to sell. Yeah, uh, there's less um, experimentation or... Yeah, there might be, uh, it's, I guess it's hard to sell books in Mexico, uh, People don't, even if it's a very big country, maybe people don't choose to to spend a lot of money on picture books because they are also very expensive. So it's kind of a luxury item. Whereas in the UK, you have um, soft covers, which make picture books much more uh, viable yeah. in a way. And I think the US is, is a different market because all of the picture books are like like objects that people cherish you you can see that because you you have lots of um special uh like embossing and glitter and effects <laughs> and you have those jackets yeah so those are very expensive to produce and people buy them as as objects you know yep yeah they're more of a almost an art piece in a way I just, yeah. it's, one of those, it's one of those things like I, I hear a lot about the, the specific markets of, you know, sort of uh, Europe and, and the United States, but you don't hear a ton out of Mexico, or at least I shouldn't say you don't. I have not heard a lot. <laughs> and it means that, that ultimately I need to probably do more research um, because I don't want to be ignorant of, of what's going on there. But it definitely is not something that comes up in conversation as much no. with folks in the industry. <laughs> There's a lot of small independent publishers making uh, making their own books in Mexico. It's just I probably think that the the English speaking market might not be interested in buying rights. I think they're yeah. generally speaking more interested in selling rights 
yeah. and promoting what they're doing locally. That's that's where the the money is, I guess. Well, it's also like I've had some of my books translated into other languages or sold in different markets, um, and it is sort of surprising to me, or and you know maybe a little bit disheartening that the books that I've worked worked on are being sold in regions where I'm sure there's also lots of other authors and illustrators that are trying to break in. And it's, it's a little uh, disheartening in the fact that like publishers or, uh, you know, the money basically does a lot of the talking. It does. So. Yeah. And you can see that in the like different publishers also have different types of agenda um, maybe a bigger like it, it's something that has come up in my research recently yeah. uh independent maybe smaller independent publishers will take more risks and will make um stories that are maybe weirder or that are maybe be less conventional whereas bigger publishers might just do things thinking about how they can sell positions yep the um, bottom line yeah <laughs> what, i mean it's a oh, business it's a business and we're in the business of making picture books i guess it's um it, we can't yeah, yeah, but... escape it I mean, I, I, I want to be in business and I want to, I want to essentially get my book sold. But at the same time, I also know that just like, it is a bit of a bummer knowing that there are lots of small independent companies out there that, you know, are, are fighting against essentially money. Yeah. Uh, and maybe you get less experimentation, but at the same time, me as a author illustrator, and I assume for you too, that like, I'm just as interested in those small publishers as I am the big publishers. And, yes. you know, getting out to a bookstore, I'm not heading directly to the to the w ones that are like on the bestseller tables. I'm going to those, you know, deeper dives into what's on the shelves to find stuff that's new or innovative in a way. Um, what w w with the Ph.D. Uh, out of curiosity, uh, I know there are a few people that asked a few questions earlier on, but um, the the is with the idea of the masters in um, picture books or in, in children's writing and, and illustrating, um, there's a clear like connection to, hey, you're going to go study and probably get something published. Mm -hmm. HD, is it with the intention of teaching? Is it what, what's the, because normally like in the art history world and things of the sort, there are certain jobs that come out of PhDs. Yes. And I'm wondering, sort of what is the impetus or what is the the reason for the PhD in your case? Like what's what's the end goal? Well, there, I, I suppose there are two different goals. Uh, goal number one is I, I'd like to, I like teaching. I enjoy teaching. I've been doing some teaching at the MA uh, this year. Yep. And uh, recently, like the regulations of universities kind of require that you do that you have a phd if you want to to, to teach in um, like a degree mm. um so that's that's one of the motivations but the other motivation is also to have research done by artists you know there's a okay. lot of research done by people who are not artists or picture book makers who who don't know how the sausage gets made <laughs> They just look, they look at the final product and they criticize it. Uh, whereas this is trying to understand how things get made from from the insider's point of view. Uh, I like I like I like the sentiment. I like the idea of like yeah, it's it's you you know you, uh, you said it the best honestly with the how the sausage gets made. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very very good way of stating that like you understand all the intricacies of what's happening beyond just uh, making a, a pretty picture. So 
Uh, is the is the intention is your thesis uh, something where you're going to be making a like research book or something or what is what is the actual thesis entail? Um. Well, uh, it, each each PhD is different. You kind of need to define what you want to do, yeah. and you need to justify it. And in my case, my thesis will be will be an, an analysis and an examination on how I've made my picture books with Walker books slash Candlewick Press. Uh, okay. Okay. Sorry, what? I said, oh, okay. In the sense of uh, you're using yourself somewhat as a a uh, uh, you're part of your own bibliography, basically. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the projects are part of the, the final thesis, and uh, it's like auto-ethnographical, <laughs> in fact. Um, and what does that mean? Well, that means an ethnographer is a person who goes and tries to understand a group of people, right? That's what they do. Like, yeah. uh, an ethnographer goes into, I don't know, let's say, the Amazon, and then they they are the observers of a certain group of people or an ethnographer is a person who i don't know decides to study uh, a urban tribe like let's say punks in mexico city in the early 2000s and so he goes out in the field and he observes what they do and he does or well she does interviews and tries to understand their ways of living and in my case, this is like a, um, this is auto ethnographical in the sense that I am trying to understand how illustrators and publishers coexist, how we create picture books, what motivates us um, as a group to make books, to create the, the type of stories that we do, and how the publisher has an influence in the final the publisher yeah. <laughs> have an influence in the final work <laughs> um so i'm just trying to examine those and put all, all those things that happen and trying to put them in a context which is the contemporary children's picture book market in in the uk and and the us because different markets have different kinds of books the french i was um in december i went with my best friend um we went to the book fair in montreuil uh, in paris and uh, we were just amazed by the books that they that they publish in there it's like books that are very risky that have lots of special features that maybe don't have a you know uh, there there are lots of books that have a main character and the main character is the drive force behind the story um whereas you can also have picture books in, in which you don't necessarily have a, a main character but it's more like a like a like a visual essay on 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 a topic on a theme yeah uh, that's uh, i mean i've i always appreciated uh a lot of european publishers for the fact that they are a little bit more risk taking mm -hmm. in a way or at least uh, maybe they're not risk taking for the market that they're in but for the market that we're in yes uh, <laughs> it, it seems very risk taking to me to like have something that you know i always hear this idea of like well you need to have your kid character and you need to have like all these different markers that imply it is a picture book and yet um there are plenty of books out there that don't do that um but they're you know maybe a little bit harder to find stateside or they're a little bit uh you know harder to find in in the uh in england and things of the sort but in certain european countries i mean you go look at some of the like classic literature from scandinavia yeah and there's some like really uh <laughs> strange and out there characters and stories yeah. that come from that that kids grew up with that maybe would not sell in a sort of um 
uh, a market like I, I grew up in, or yeah. it would be deemed scary or, or uh, not worthy of being on the shelf in the same way. Um, uh, the chicken egg thing. Yeah. Like what happened first? Yep. <laughs> the market created the books or the books created the market? <laughs> Do you find, um, I mean, how much, think, thinking about that in particular, is there a type of book that you would like to work on that maybe the market has uh, prevented or... Uh, do you feel like you're sort of in your wheelhouse right now and, uh, you know, why rock the boat if you're happy with what you're making? Um, I was, I don't know, I think I've had a bit of both. When I made Gustavo and when I made Leila and Brad, I think I wasn't expecting them to allow me to do like my publishers to just be really happy with like oh yeah you know use a lot of mexican elements and uh, use day of the dead uh imaging uh, imaginary and things of the sort so i was just really surprised and also with the witches i mean there's a there there's a tribute to goya the, the the Sabbath painting mm -hmm. and lots of kind of witch like historical witches um what's it called um it's not wings like references references to to pieces of to works of art oh, like nod to, yeah. wink and a nod to, yeah historical witches things of the sort and I I was I thought oh they might not allow me to to do this or that but no they were they were really good um about that um so i was just really, really surprised by how open they were um but now i'm trying to make this book which is i don't know maybe more challenging maybe more difficult to sell it's uh, and this book came from my research. It's just that it's a scary book, like a proper scary book. And um, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with that. Uh, I'll have a I'll have a conversation with my with my publisher, with my editor Maria. Hello, <laughs> if you're what, there. <laughs> so, what, why scary? Was it? What is it about scary that the ending is quite scary no but i mean like for you why you, you tend to do a lot of like scary characters yes but, but i mean if if you look at if you closely look at my books there's nothing scary happens it's it's all about oh, yeah. like i i basically appropriate lots of horror but it's not with the intention of, of scare my audience. It's more like cultural appropriation that I use because I think it works as as visual elements, they, for instance, Gustavo makes it makes sense to use a ghost because a ghost is the best way. It's, it's a very fitting symbol for shyness. You know, yes. when you when you're shy, you feel like you're invisible. You feel like you want to be seen, but no one's looking at you, and it's a bit what ghosts do they're like they're presences that are there but unless you pay attention to them you don't you you don't see them um so that's what i did with those books i kind of appropriated like witches uh, for instance in in the case of leila i'm using witches uh i'm drawing from basically children's folklore if you think about it witches are kind of serial killers so. <laughs> they eat children they cook them um but in my book they don't they're just existing happily in their own world they're just kind of being misinterpreted by everyone uh, and if you pay attention hansel and gretel are the dangerous ones they yeah <laughs> they basically broke into their houses and you know they, the they shot grandma into the oven 
they're they're the uh the perpetrators in the in that case it's it's um it's interesting to me just that that idea of uh, i mean the ghost i think is is fabulous in the sense of like capturing that um the the shyness or the invisibility factor uh that goes along with that like the transparency and translucency that comes with it um do you do you feel lo looking at because you have the series now you essentially have three is there a fourth one coming it may be i don't know i have i have some ideas for other characters okay and i i can't just if i have an an idea for a character I might want to try it out but it's not like I'm just trying to make, make more books it's more like if something fits yeah I might try and do it <laughs> uh, the, the reason I ask is sometimes you get you know when you when you have a popular book like that there becomes this like the publishers are like okay what's the next thing what's the next one what's the next mm. one and mm. sometimes you can go well uh you know i have an idea or sometimes it becomes a i'm tapped out and i want to try something else and can yeah. we, you know can we play around for a little bit um do you do you find that um the that you're getting asked a lot about i mean obviously those books are a hit so it's not like it's a surprise that people are going hey what's the what's the next one but find that you uh you tend to end up being uh even pigeonholed or yeah the, the expectation is is you know you're only going to do these type of books from here till the end of time yeah um yeah i know what you mean um i don't know i'm trying as i've said i'm, I'm trying to get a different type of book out but i, I don't know if I will be allowed to. <laughs> I bet. I bet you can if you find the right. You find the publisher, uh, and I mean, Candlewick is. Uh, have all the books been through Candlewick? Sorry. For most of them, have most of the books been through Candlewick? I mean, it. Yeah, I mean, Blood is my third picture book as an author, and I've been working just with Walker Books and Candlewick. I haven't worked with any anybody else. Yeah, it's yet. the. Candlewick is someone or as a publisher does a lot of like really interesting ideas. I mean, like even the equivalent of do is talk. Yeah. Uh, you know, like that's, that's one that uh, on paper doesn't sound like it's going to sell. Yeah. Uh, sell well, like it's a totally made up language, the entire thing. And uh, yeah. so I could see them wanting to do something. You already have an established relationship with them. It's a matter of just convincing them. Uh, I'm trying to. <laughs> over time. I really am. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do for um, my silly cute or scary cute. I'm trying to figure out like what character to play with. I uh, don't know. I'm I'm gonna have a look. What is, what are you drawing? I have no idea yet. I'm <laughs> drawing some sort of horse with skulls but i don't think you can really see it because it's not um you can see it it's just it's very light but yes. i know you're gonna go darker at some point so yeah it'll get there. i'm just getting there i have no idea what i'm drawing i'm just going on with it <laughs> i didn't have a yep. sketch it's not usually how i work but it like it's okay it's that's, good to start here doing something different. I think that's what I'm like, uh, I'm struggling with. Originally it was, uh, I mean, I could do this monster, but it's, it's, I feel like it's compositionally, I need something that's more interesting than just this monster. Um, but I want to play around with texture. So I like this like fur thing going on. Maybe I just need to do that. And I'll, I'll see where it goes. I'll yes. figure it out. It's yes. play. I need to stop. Stop questioning it and just play. Um, so tell me a little bit about, um, you, you said that you did graphic design. What was, it was, you mentioned chocolates and stuff. Was it graphic design for all sorts of products or was it a specific company that you were working for? Uh, we were working mostly with the devil. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're doing lots of things for Nestle. Um, okay. 
And I, I did everything. I was, you know, uh, designing labels for like milk, milk, you know, powder milk for baby yep. formula, baby formula it's called. Um, different type of things for chocolate. I think my favorite projects were when we were designing things for coffee for Nespresso. Uh, we designed a, a coffee, like a Dolce, Dolce Gusto coffee machine. Okay. Uh, for uh, basically, it was a Frida Kahlo themed coffee machine, and it, it was it was interesting because uh, it, like the family of Frida Kahlo has a brand, and uh, they want to. They they make projects and products with Frida's name, and they wanted to do this, this collaboration with Dolce Gusto, but the, the things that they were coming up weren't working for Dolce Gusto, so they decided to to hire like uh, someone who was not involved with the with the brand, yeah. with Frida the brand, to do the job, and they wanted us to. Make make a, a coffee shop like I don't I don't know how well you you know the work of Frida Kahlo but it is very intense there's a lot of emotion going in there and it's it can be quite brutal and painful yes yeah she as a person was she was lovely she was honestly I think she was a very good and positive human being and they wanted to reflect that in the in the coffee sh in coffee pot. So I decided to paint to to just make an illustration about her. She had lots of animals. She couldn't have children, but she had lots of animals. She had monkeys. She had parakeets. She had um, all sorts of pets. So I drew that in her house, which is very beautiful. They have a massive garden. Uh, in Coyoacán, which is a very, very beautiful neighborhood in Mexico, Mexico City. And they really liked it. Uh, another, another project that I really liked doing as a, as a designer was like uh, chocolate boxes for Christmas, for Valentine's. They would just allow us to do um, basically they 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 would just told us well this year's the theme is polka dots so can you design some Christmas things with polka dots in them and I'm like yeah sure <laughs> very very simple yeah a simple like, assignment there that was a trending topic that year for unknown reasons to me but you just go along meaning, with it meaning polka dots yeah polka dots like, yeah. <laughs> The hit, the hit thing of the season is polka dots. Yeah. yeah. The, isn't that something that's always been around? And why are we? <laughs> I don't know. Why is that new? Yeah. They decided polka dots was the theme of the year, and I just said, "Perfect. I'll do you. I'll do you boxes with polka dots." And then the boxes, I dis I turned the boxes into characters. So the rectangle was. A character and you could see the product in the belly it's it's quite fun to do package design because you have a very very limited amount of space in which to create something that is impactful that sells that it's nice that showcases showcases the brand and the product and also the nutritious information yeah do you is that something that um, you said that it was it was working for uh, well, I, if I if I remember correctly it was like working in hell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what was it? What was it that was so tough about it? No, no, no it was. I, I didn't mean it like that. It was mostly like <laughs> Nestle's evil, isn't it? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> they make a lot of profit selling water. Okay. <laughs> Things like gotcha. that. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, but no, it's not like they were evil or anything. My bosses were really nice. I had a, I had a lovely, like I think that's one of the things I sometimes miss about going to an office, like seeing my friends every day and having a gossip. Yeah, and then yeah. just talking about stuff. That was fun. Is there? Um, does that mean that you spend most of your day in the studio by yourself? Yes. Yeah, myself and the cats. But now that I'm teaching, it's a bit different because I do get to see people's faces, <laughs> which is nice. I like that. Do you have a quick group or anybody that you meet with on a regular basis? Um, sometimes I meet some, some friends who live in Cambridge, go for lunch or breakfast with some friends who live in the same little town where I am yeah. based. Uh, things like that and i i assume that you got a lot of of great art contacts through that master's program yeah just yes, in general i have friends from the from the ma and also like my best friend lives in london so it's lucky because i get to see her pretty often actually is that someone that um was from the the master's program or is that someone that came from uh mexico or, or barcelona well we're both from mexico but we met when we were living in paris <laughs> we got the same scholarship and so we we were very poor students and we decided hey we both have the same scholarship why don't we share a studio and it was very convenient because it was very cheap but yeah. we didn't know that we were not going to be flatmates we we were literally roommates <laughs> <laughs> two grown women being roommates was really tough the last couple months were really tough well we survived our friendship survived it's been 10 years <laughs> <laughs> The, we're still friends yeah, yeah are, are you implying that you're hard to live with and that they're hard to live with no okay. no we're <laughs> i think we're we're both really nice to live with it just we were both going to the same course we were living in the same room with like it's not like we had each our bed oh that's that's oh. what made it difficult oh okay i i got you. <laughs> i i was thinking it was you had your own room separate Okay. No, like, that's what that's... we thought when we signed the contract. We said studio. Yes, great. Yeah. Uh, okay. No. That makes that makes yeah. That's a big difference. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A, it's it you know it goes back quite a quite a a time for me when I was living in the same room as someone. Yeah. Uh, that was not my wife. Um, exactly. Is there? Is there anything that, you know, I'm, I'm looking at questions that people have put up on, on the feed here. There's lots of questions about sort of um, starting out and uh, what it's like to get your first book published and how do you have, make that happen, et cetera. But uh, some of that is, you know, standard fair question that we can answer, but I'm also interested in like things like that. Like, you know, the experiences of life that come up related to heart uh, to art or are tangential in some way um that not everybody expects like the equivalent of uh having to live uh with an artist or with a friend that you know later in life sometimes you have to make sacrifices sometimes you have to uh you know share a studio with someone who is uh <laughs> potentially not your your preferred artist friend um what what was it like starting out for you how much how much of it was like fear how much of it was uh uh learning on the fly ah dear i had to learn so much i think it was a very slow it was like i tried getting a book published for 10 years <laughs> it's okay. not it's not like Gustav that was the first time ever I ever tried to to get a book published. Yeah. It's like I was trying to do that actively for 10 years. And um, during those 10 years, I had to 
to grow a lot. I think my first picture book attempt, in those I was just really trying everything. I was using lots of color, lots of textures, lots of pattern, everything at the same time. And then in time I needed to learn how to edit edit out things that were not necessary edit edit out things that were yeah yeah just kind of yeah filler yeah filler. yeah just me trying to show that i could do things basically um, gotcha. did you was it um like how long for the for those that are listening that are going well i've been doing that too and it's it's you know I still haven't connected. How long did it take from when you I, first said, I want to do this to the time where something like Gustavo got published? How many years are we talking? Well, we're talking 10 years, as I've said. Oh, yeah. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> in, in, in my case, it was 10 years. Some others can do it a little more quickly. Do you, was it a, uh, a daily slog? to get there or was it something wherein uh you you sort of dropped out at points because you questioned or you know like how how much of that time in that 10 years was um steadfast i'm doing this and, and daily you were practicing i was i don't know i was juggling full-time jobs with a with trying to become an illustrator. Um, so it was just a constant thing of, um, like in the full-time jobs, I was trying to learn as much as I could from the job. Okay. And just put practice illustration as, as much as I could. If, if there was a, if, if there was a project that I could, illustrator that I could use illustration in, I would just take the chance and do it. Um, but I think the fact that I got a scholarship to, to do the MA gave me the time to just for, for, for a whole year, just sit down and, and do what I wanted to do, which was making picture books. Yeah. That was, that was, that was a luxury, but it was so, a luxury that I was working really hard to get at some point so when you were at uh the the master's program who were you studying with and work is just really 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 beautiful very evocative lots of watercolor and it's really delicate artwork so marina ruiz is one of one of my classmates she's very inspiring Taylor Dolan, she's she's amazing. She makes um, horror picture books, basically. Uh, she loves horror. She loves darkness. Uh, we get along well because of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's also very, very inspiring. Her characters have so much personality, so much strength, movement. There's patterns. All sorts of things are going on in her head. She's really, really in amazing. Um, who else was in my course? Uh, there's uh, uh, Eva Ellen. She makes this. She made this book called "When Sadness Comes to Call." Okay. Uh, in which, like a blue blob like character who represents sadness is kind of um part of the life of a of a child who who tries to understand how how to deal with it <laughs> um it's about complicated emotions and how how they, they are with you every day um she's very smart she's very sensitive i mean yeah there's lots of tons of, tons of yeah too many lots, to 
lots of inspiring people in the in the MA. Um, yes. And then I was studying under the guidance of the likes of Martin Salisbury. He made this book called Children's Picture Book: The Art of uh, of um, Storytelling. I think it's called. That book was really important to me because I didn't know what a picture book was until after I've read that book. Mm. And uh, in what sense? Like, obviously, you had seen picture books, but was it? What was it about that book in particular that makes you say that you you didn't really understand until then? Well, I had until I read that book, I hadn't realized that in picture books the images are as important as the text. The, like without without the images, you can't really have a picture book. Okay. Uh, and that, that's when I began to understand. Huh. Oh, okay. So if I want to make a picture book, I need to basically let the images do do the work. I don't need to be obvious. I don't need to write down everything. I, yeah, I don't need to write everything in words. I can just draw happily. <laughs> yeah. Um, Show it, don't say it. That's the the phrase that I've always heard. Exactly. That, yeah. Yeah, but it, it's something that until you learn it, you, you don't necessarily know it or appreciate it. Is there, um, th thinking about sort of the the content is there some major lessons that uh you took away and said oh this is like how do i put this uh if i i had to relay the content from that book in like a sentence or two is there a way that you could sum it up for people that uh don't have the chance to go take that that course or um are uh Wow, my brain is my brain is collapsing on me right now. Uh, <laughs> just yeah. that, that idea of like a quick sentiment of of sort of this is what's necessary in order to be in that um, in this career. Are there a couple of quick things that you can say that would be like inspirational for those that are trying to figure out if this is a career for them? Well, the most important thing uh, if you're planning to become a children's book illustrator is this is really hard <laughs> <laughs> this is a really hard job there's a lot of people who want to do it uh don't get discouraged just carry on trying be self-critical and draw as much as you can there is no way of improving without drawing and drawing is hard and you will make lots of horrible drawings like I don't feel like I'm doing a particularly nice drawing right at the moment but I'll just finish it hey, and see what I can learn from it and that's... I'm right there with you I don't know where this is going at all yeah <laughs> <laughs> eventually eventually it will come to be but right now it is a a hot mess yeah um do you how often do you get to play with art uh, I haven't, I, I think before the MA I had a lot of opportunity to, to do lots and lots of experiments. I, I, I did stuff with, with gouache, I did collage, and then during my courses, I, I, the year I was in France, I did uh, some dry point, uh, Aquatant, uh, which is like, uh, 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 what's it called? You basically burn copper copper plates yep. with acid. Um, so I was doing lots and lots of experimentation, but recently because, um, I don't know, I just, with Gustavo, I did experimentation when um, I was, trying to establish a way of, of working. I was trying to to see how the picture wood would look like. I tried different things. And because the second and third picture book are connected to Gustavo, I think 
I just I didn't do as much experimentation because yeah, it was hard. they're just locked in. They're part yeah. of a of a series, so you can't you can't try maybe different techniques, but you can you can do things anyway. You can work with color, or you can try out other stuff. And with the PhD, uh, um, two years ago I was doing some experiments with. Uh, with the um, lino cut, it's been interesting. I was just using lino cuts and layers of color to create like secret hidden images. Okay. Um, so it just it 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 depends on the project completely. <laughs> I, I I tend to think of of sort of people of your caliber. And I, I I don't say that without uh, any hesitation. I suppose that uh, <laughs> the people of your caliber uh, finding time because I imagine that you're you're sort of always uh, thinking about the next project or people are always talking to you about your previous projects mm -hmm. and whatnot. That to find time to play can be very hard. Yeah. Um, to to get that uh, that moment to be able to sort of goof around. Um, and I, I understand the idea of, especially like you've set a style. I'm working, I just signed a contract yesterday for a fourth in a series. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's not to say that I dislike the series, but it means that I'm drawing the same style again yeah. uh, for the next book, which, um, you know, for someone who likes to play and likes to experiment, sometimes that can be challenging. But at the same time, I know that if I didn't do it, the book wouldn't get published. Exactly. Um, in fact, they reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to do this before we sign on? <laughs> we want to know, are you interested? Because they didn't want a fourth to look different than the first three. Um, mm -hmm. And I imagine, you know, as you're working on the, the Gustavo series that every time it was, you know, having to go back into the, the wheel well of, uh, of style and go, you know, well, I got to match what I did before even though you may be progressing in a different direction. Um, is there, is there uh, artists in particular that you are, are drawn towards now that you've been working in the industry since, um, you know, you mentioned stuff like Oliver Jeffers and whatnot yeah. originally, but uh, I imagine that time and, and research has brought you to different artists as well. Yeah. Are there, are there folks now that are, are sparking your interest? Yes, um, yeah, definitely. Um, so you've probably seen her work, and if uh, Julia Sarda, yep. she makes really amazing and interesting books. Um, I, I, a new favorite of mine is obviously John Klassen. I, I also love Carson Ellis. <laughs> Lots of people who work with uh, Candlewick, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Do you get, yeah, is it, is this some sort of inside job that you're trying to sway people into buying no. all the Candlewick stuff? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. Um, there's, uh, I recently became friends with him and, uh, yeah, he also makes books with Walker books, but Steve McCarthy, he's, he's Irish, he makes, uh, I don't know how he does that but his characters have so much personality and movement and he is good at working with shape um textures and he made this book called the wilderness and, oh yeah um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah i really like his work um I'm I'm bad with names when it comes to like people but if you mention a book or you show me a picture uh generally that's where i can like go oh yeah i know exactly um i'm uh i am people's names though for the most part i'm i'm not great with but um and what what is your uh what does your book collection look like right now you must have you must have a, a library somewhere right yes i do it's it's a hidden library <laughs> what it's been it's hidden because it's behind the door um but mostly like to be honest 
Um, most of the books that I've been buying are connected to my research in a way or another. So I would say that 90% of my current picture book collection has books that are connected somehow to my research topic, meaning um, there are books with monsters, there are books with uh, scary endings, there are books that have something macabre in them. Uh, uh, so, yes. Uh, okay. We can find, um, oh. I think one of my, my favorite, to be honest, one of my favorite things that I've discovered in the research is this book called A Children's Book of Demons <laughs> by Aaron Layton. Um, this book, I don't think this book will, will get reprinted again <laughs> because a lot of people basically, um, became crazy when this book got published because they they wouldn't agree uh, um, what, what what do you mean that, became crazy they 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 threatened they they threatened the illustrator and the publisher oh because they thought they were promoting satanism or i don't know you know <laughs> interesting okay um but the thing is that this book is right up my alley it's it's a little bit weird but it's really fun um it's basically a book of imaginary demons and you know demons are spirits uh they're not they're not evil we we now associate them with evil but demons are basically mischievous spirits and it's basically a book that helps you or, or gives you ideas as to how you can conjure them. But it's, it's demons that are obviously not real because it's the demon that will help you uh, to, I don't know, do your homework or the demon that will help you to learn how to play a musical instrument or the demon that will help you to finish your meal so it's all connected with the experiences of children in a way. So I think it's really smart, but it's based, I think, I think it scared some people, like really scared some people because... Um, Just because of that word. Yeah, because... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's such a fun idea. And it was published by Koyama Press, who was an independent publisher in Canada. And the founder of Koyama Press is a woman called Annie. And she she basically wanted, as, as far as I know, she basically wanted to op open up a publishing house as, as a means to help artists produce work. Yeah. But it's shut now because, I don't know, maybe... Uh, maybe that book can be particular <laughs> no no i don't think it was that book in particular maybe from from what i understand because i did interview some of some of the authors who worked with her it was becoming too big oh <laughs> and um she maybe didn't have the the time or the or, or energy to manage it yeah so, oh, got it. there you go got away from her of some sort yeah. Yeah, it died. They also published another very interesting book called Evie and the Truth About Witches by John Martz. And I love that book because the ending is quite scary, actually. It's like, how did you get away with it? You know, in the in the English picture book market. Yeah. It still it sounds that one sounds vaguely familiar and I'm trying to figure out why. Uh, how would I know? It's, it, it was reprinted with Tundra. Uh, okay, maybe that's maybe that's how I know it then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I love it. I think I love the artwork and I love the story. <laughs> and I love the ending particularly. <laughs> um, is there 
Is there a publisher in particular that you would like to work with? Uh, I would I mean, love to do something. Candlewick is great, but there's probably yeah. someone else out there too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd love to make book with I mean, maybe Chronicle Books. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, <coughs> with Enchanted Lion. Um, I mean, I think they make very interesting books, but it would have to be the right book for them as well. I'd... Yeah. That sounds very much like the books that I, <coughs> my top ones are essentially the three that you're talking about. That <coughs> and and I would add in uh, Flying Eye Press. Yeah. That they're all sort of do a little bit weird and eccentric they do. Uh, type of books, and so like they all are up there for me and i love the publishers that i've i've published through but the those are the ones that like chronicle does some really interesting concepts mm -hmm. and then flying eye and um and um uh what, what was the other one why am i drawing a blank flying eye and enchanted lion enchanted lion yeah. yes do some really sort of uh out there uh, approaches that I think would be really fun to play with. Um, I'm trying to figure out if I want to do this like... Recently there is this new imprint called Unruly. Um, oh, I that one. I, I, I can't remember. I will google something and I'll hang on. Can you I try to stay up as much as possible on all these different publishers, but it's there are so many out there that it's kind of hard to to keep them all uh, in my brain at all times. Um, let's see. I'm trying to figure out what color I should make this. All right. One. So Unruly is an imprint from Enchanted Lion. Oh, okay. And what they're trying to do is picture books for adults. Uh, uh, last year they they did a kickstart campaign and, and it, they, they they achieved their goal and now they're they're tr they're planning on doing um picture books for adults so they have in the catalog they have really really cool artists like Valerio Vitali or Beatrice Alemania or um who else was there Violeta Lopez, oh, she's great. Can I can I address real quick how awesome it is to and this? Is, maybe this is gonna sound weird, but like how you can just roll those names off your tongue and they sound so natural. <laughs> <laughs> and if I tried to do it, they would sound the most like stereotypically American, uh, white, bland version. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first language is Spanish, so I know, but it's just like, 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 like my, wife, first... my wife is learning Spanish right now through uh, uh, Duolingo, and she can roll her R's now. Huh? And yeah. I am like, I, that was always difficult for me, and I've never been able to pick that up. It's just a like uh, a muscle issue or something that I can never roll R's, uh -huh. uh, and to hear someone just you know, gracefully state these names without any <laughs> hesitation whatsoever. Yeah, it's like... yeah but I, I, at the same time, I will never be able to say the sound uh, eh in English. Like, there are certain words that I can't properly pronounce, and I know it. It's just, you know, your brain gets wired when, like, even before yeah. you to speak a certain language. So, there's, that's just the way it is. <laughs> it just like it sounds it sounds so beautiful and like uh like graceful and i just like yeah no i uh <laughs> don't don't ask me to say those names yeah. after you just said <laughs> it'd be tra tragic well on all parts. we can read the names and yeah. look yeah. at the artwork and it's it, they're just great i find even on uh, this Gavin Doodle, there's times where people like say something or question something. I try to say their name, and I know that uh, I'm doing a bad job of trying to say it because I I 
don't see the same letters rolling out uh, in front of me that their you know their their hashtag or their rather their um, their username is. But um, it's the artwork that matters. It's not the yeah. It's not I mean, pronunciation. To uh, be honest, <laughs> my full name is Flavia Sorrilla Drago, <laughs> but I thought that was too long and difficult, so I just shortened it to Flavia Z Drago. <laughs> So let me ask you about that, because one of the things that I do um, teach in particular is branding. And, and with uh, with my seniors this next semester, we're going to be going through that. Mm -hmm. And that idea of like choosing a name and how you maintain your brand. I mean, the, the fact that you have the Z in there, was there already a, a, a Flavia Drago? Or was there, see, I try to roll my R. Yes, I see. I can I appreciate this. <laughs> <laughs> but why, what, what was the decision in, in choosing to maintain the Z? Because it's okay. So in Mexico, um, we have two surnames. First, we have our, our dad's surname, which would be Sorilla, which is the Z. And then we have also our mothers, like the maternal surname. We keep both. We're really? registered okay. with both when we we're born. So my full name is Flavia Sorrilla Drago. Um, do you, is, is, do you have a middle name on top of that? Or is it, I mean, you just said it. So like, no, that's your middle name. Or that's your, what we would call middle name in. No, 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 no. Some people do have a middle name. Like let's say you're called. Ana Sofia uh, Gonzalez Perez. Um, Gonzalez Perez is your surname. Um, Ana is your main name and Sofia is your middle name. But yeah, it's different. It works. It just works different. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. This is, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's unknown to me. Um, I live a, a pretty boring uh existence i guess because i i didn't know that the uh that you had two surnames yeah. um fascinating okay all right all right um so tell me a little bit about uh your uh your your history with family and artwork and whatnot did you have other folks in your family that were big into artwork or was that something that you were the the first of your kind mm, my dad is an architect and I would always steal his, like he's old school architect. So he would, when I was very little, he would sit on his, at his desk and, uh, you know, use like, um, what's it called? Uh, markers to draw the designs of the, what do you call it? Planos are called in. Uh, blueprints? Blueprints, yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah. He would draw the blueprints by hand, and he he was so thorough, and he had such straight, perfect uh, handwriting. Like, and if you imagine the handwriting of an architect, that yep. that my dad's handwriting. <laughs> you know, it's funny because you say the handwriting of an architect, and I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, there is yes. a distinct, there is a distinct letter form that goes for any graphic designers out there. Right. Uh, we'll know exactly what you're talking about, like the the width and the height of some of the letter forms, and uh, pretty spot on. Yeah. Uh, something that people can uh, attach to. Um, yeah. Is there? Is that something that you think that carried over to you, or are you a in the sense of like the precision of the architect, or are you much more of a like loosey goosey uh, maker? I don't think I'm. I'm as precise as he he was with the artwork. I'm, I don't know. I my struggle is that sometimes I feel I'm too stiff, and sometimes I wish I was more perfect with with the drawing. Um, my my sister, like thinking about family, my sister studied graphic design, so basically I was just she's eleven years older than me. And so when she was in uni, I was I was a little girl, and I was just following her, pestering her all the time, basically. 
uh, just looking at her homework and it, it looked fun. So she was kind of like my main inspiration for trying to, to do a job in that was creative. My mom yeah. is a scientist. She wanted us to, to be scientists. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of scientist? Uh, uh, she's a chemist. Yeah, see if it was a more exciting type of science. I'm, I'm going to put the blame. I'm going to put the blame on her. <laughs> yeah. I think if hadn't I loved drawing so much, I might have like pursuing a a, a job in science. <laughs> I mean, I I know that there was a point in my life where like I thought oh, it would be fun to have a science art job like paleontology or uh, something where you know you need a. a, a actual science degree um but i also know that i'm not the type of person to remember half of that information and mm -hmm. therefore it just sort of got dropped altogether. um and with uh with you making books ha have your parents been super supportive of your art career yes yes they have they've always been very supportive of me even if my mom probably wished I had that I had done something different she she was always supportive and she was she would give me whatever I needed uh, yeah but now you can now you can just say hey I'm a New York Times bestseller right <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that might have some clout uh, thanks, <laughs> thanks the, to them yeah. and thanks like my sister and my, my brother-in-law was actually very important He's been married to my sister for actually 25 years now. And, and he was very encouraging. When, when I was a little girl, he would just buy me art materials and uh, clay so that I could build my clay, um, just uh, clay, ah, como se dice? Um, uh, like, so that I could, they do some sculptures, like clay sculptures. <laughs> and he was always encouraging me to, to carry on. He's very, very important to me. Is uh, the, the idea of sort of growing up and getting all the, the masters and things of the sort, uh, and then coming back home, do you have a certain impression in the sense of um, the what do I want to say? How do I say this? Uh, is there a a level of uh, respect that came with going to that level of education with your parents? Especially, I mean, thinking about an architect and a scientist, that's very sort of like studious, yeah. most of those careers. And then you go off and you study art. And sometimes, at least in my case, like my family was very much business oriented and art mm -hmm. was sort of out of range. But mm -hmm when i come back and i say hey this is what i've done with it i got my masters i'm teaching i'm doing all these other things there was definitely a like a different mindset uh or a different approach that came out of them uh with that sort of background is there a um was there like when you got your masters did all of a sudden it's like oh you're really taking this serious <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess they, they knew that I was always serious. Okay. Um, maybe they didn't know, as I didn't, that there would be masters or even PhDs on children's book illustration. But now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no there's no going back at this point. Exactly. Yeah, you're not they're not going to somehow uh, convince you that you got to go back and be an artist or uh, uh, <laughs> now. No. Imagine, uh, wait, did I just cut that on the wrong side? I guess I did. Um, I, uh, I still like worry to this day because my family is very uh, business heavy, mm -hmm. uh, put it that way. And uh, not that they're not in support of what I do, but just the idea that um, I'm definitely the strange one for wanting to go into art Mm -hmm. uh, when I did and now they understand it, but I still feel like I have to like live up to 
uh, some sense of, of um, I don't know, like family expectations. Mm. Like that. This, is psycho this is you being my therapist now for a that's, second. So. That, that, that always happens one way or another. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whether you're an artist or a yes, woman yes. or something, your family will always have some sort of expectations about you, but I guess as long as you're... Kids and parents. Yeah. 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 It has nothing to do with uh, with the art thing. It's probably just, yeah, I just, I'm trying to make sure they're happy with, with their choices and they don't look back and go, ooh, we screwed up. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which they probably did in some way, but we won't, we won't bring it out uh, right now. Uh, <laughs> is there... Uh, I'm trying to here hold on a second I gotta I gotta figure out how to draw this what shape going. what is that are you doing a troll yeah some sort of troll character that's very cute I like the nose and the eyebrows <laughs> he's gonna have really long fingers here and he's gonna be looking at uh something in his hand and I'm just not sure exactly how long I want to make this hand and so I'm trying to figure out like where it's positioned, should it be shorter? I like the idea he's got a really long finger though. Um, we'll figure it out. Uh, so what do you do? What, what are some of the hobbies outside of art? What are the, like, obviously art is the hobby, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, but given, let's say you're, you're uh, God forbid, your drawing hand, uh, no longer works. What's the thing that you fall back on? Ah, I don't know. Well, I guess I could fall back, fall back on academia. <laughs> uh, yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you had a you had a good answer that yeah was already there in front of me, and I didn't even see that. I was setting. I was falling into a trap yeah. right in front of you. Um, do you with, with teaching what is it that um i mean you said that being around people and and getting out of studio but is there something in particular that sort of drew you to teaching um i think it's i think it keeps you busy in uh, in the sense that you can't relax it might be easy to get complacent when when you're somehow becoming a bit successful i guess you can you can maybe stop wandering around stop researching but i think that when you're teaching you need to you need to carry on yeah there, there is no stopping because students are going to come up with questions <laughs> yeah the the industry evolves and you have to stay with it mm-hmm what, what are you teaching specifically? What is the class? Um, we're doing, it's called Master's Stage Project. And I am not, I'm not really te teaching anything. I am more like tutoring or supervising my yeah. students in their, in that they are developing their, their graduation projects. Gotcha. They, come, gotcha. they come up with their ideas. And if they want to do a picture book, we we help them to. So you're telling me you're not even doing the hard work? <laughs> just, no, just kidding. no. I'm just kidding, of course. <laughs> uh, no, that, that it's it's. I had a, when I did my master's program, same thing. We had advisors, and it was sort of here's your main project, work on that, and then you would take a few classes here and there uh, to sort of. Um, make it exciting and and you know variety but for the most part it was you met with your advisors and and did what you needed to do mm -hmm. um how, how long ago was that that you did the the masters i graduated in 2018 so that's six years ago yeah. and you're already to the point like your thesis for your phd is already almost done no nah, i wish oh. okay, okay. <laughs> this is the this is the year when i need to start writing the thesis oh okay. so this is this is the year where i'm going to suffer the most okay i anticipate <laughs> this yeah. is yeah this is the painful part yeah. okay this just, is the painful part yeah i mean 
and sometimes like in the art history side i know it can be like 10 15 years for a, a phd to oh to come no, about. no i need to finish this year because funding is is over after i do it and it's very expensive and i don't have the means to do it without the scholarship so gotcha. no this is it <laughs> that's it okay so does that mean you have to put off some of the other stuff then i need to what do you need do you need to put off some of the like the other book work and stuff or is that well is that top of doing the phd has meant that i can do a lot less illustrate like com commissioned work yeah than i would have other bins uh, have done how do i phrase that in english yeah yeah i mean you would have done otherwise you would have been yeah i would have done on... more more projects yeah, and exactly. I've been doing the PhD, but the PhD has been interesting because I've it's given me the chance to do some maybe some work that otherwise I wouldn't have done. Kind of pushed me into trying different things and see what comes from them. Meaning that just the the type of like artwork you're making or yeah, yeah artwork wise i was I, I, I did a couple projects that were not necessarily aimed at children uh, okay. uh, that resulted in kind of interesting stuff and just having fun in the print room and enjoying myself and um, do you think that any of that will come back into your books at some point i would li like to yeah i'm kind of hoping that eventually those kind of exploratory projects will turn into real life projects we'll see <laughs> uh, I, I like the idea of uh the sort of we'll see or that that sentiment is a good sentiment for a lot of a lot of artists out there that are you know almost pre-planning or <laughs> planning too much in a way just that idea of like we'll see and and we'll cross that that bridge when we get to it of some sort um i'm trying to figure out if i want i'm still trying to figure this guy out and like what i want to do with my monster here um oh, so it's, me, it's upside down yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, it's just it's easier for me to to get to it this way <laughs> are you wait are you a type of person who like their board stays in the same position the whole time uh no okay no just i haven't moved it because otherwise i'm i i can't i don't know where the frame is so i'm just working oh. in a and a bit of a natural way <laughs> otherwise i would have been like woof, woof, woof. that's my, my uh when i i used to do time lapse uh of me working sort of early on in my instagram days and i am such a a I, I am the type of person who will move the canvas around to, or the, the surface around to get the best angle. And yeah. it would just spin and spin and spin constantly. <laughs> uh, and it was very hard to watch uh, for anybody that tried to watch it. Um, one of the one of the challenges I had was uh, over the, the couple of years ago, I did a thing with Domestica. Uh, oh. And they are very particular about lining up your work and making sure that it's you know stays consistent and it's not moving around like crazy yeah and that was very, very hard to work on because i had to like force my arm into positions that it didn't feel natural of any sort just so i could put paint down on the board yeah, uh, yeah. And but, like pretend it's real ah. yeah yeah have you have you done one of those yeah i did one uh when was it um 2020 early 2020 got published okay actually have you have you met your royalty side of things on that yet i think so yeah okay. yeah i still get a little like a little check every month i didn't i forgot that it was royalty based and i i asked for a higher advance which was fine i don't mind asking for the higher advance but i forgot that the, uh, when it came down to the actual uh oh. production and whatnot i was like oh i'm gonna make some money and then i saw oh no it came off the top of the off the advance and i was uh, a bit shocked mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but it's my own fault i uh i didn't pay close enough attention to it at the beginning you what what 
I didn't pay close enough attention or I forgot that essentially that it was an advance on royalties versus a, uh, 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 just um, uh, a flat payment of sorts. So. When did your curse came out? Uh, it came out this last November. Huh. It was actually supposed to come out a year before, uh -huh. but it got uh, put off uh, because of unknown reasons to me at least. So, uh, let's see. I'm going to go back and see if there's other questions that I've missed here because I've been talking so much. Um, oh, here we go. Here's a good question for us. Uh, this is coming from Green Girl Blue Planet. It says, mm -hmm. I love your color palettes. Do you think as an illustrator that it's helpful to have a distinctive, consistent color palette or just let the story inspire chosen colors? Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it should be depend it, the color palette depends on your, on each project on what you need yeah. illustration is communicating and you need you communicate through color so i would say yeah it depends on on each project yeah i think i mean my my sentiment would be very very similar however i would add in that it's okay to have uh, consistency as long as it is over your entire portfolio and not from piece to piece. Yeah. So like if you're, if you're known as someone who's like somewhat desaturated, great, you know, that's fine, but you don't want to every piece to be the same palette every single time. Uh, Cause otherwise it will get repetitive and people will notice it, but like having a, a distinct flavor to your color Yes, I think that's a little bit inevitable as well. There are certain colors we're always drawn to, or at least to me, I find some pleasing working with certain types of green, yeah. blue. I'm a bit unhappy that I am uh, started using this yellow. Usually I don't like this bright of a yellow, but it's it's there. <laughs> so Wait. there's nothing I can do anymore. Is it is, is it the... Uh, a, a least favorite color yellow or is it that specific yellow that's the challenge? I think this shade of very bright yellow is not one of my favorite. I prefer markier kind of yellows, like dirtier. Yeah, okay. Sort of mustardy. Yeah. Or, or almost the, on the green, like you have this greenish gray mustard yellow mm -hmm. that shows up in some of the work that I could see. Um, yeah. we, we have a question here from uh, uh, see, now I'm going to ruin this. Uh, Austria Pantoja, something like that, says, what do you miss the most about Mexico? And uh, then the question for me, have I ever been to Mexico? Um, so what, you know, now you're living in, in the old uh, British Isles. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, is, there, is there something that is like a bummer that you don't get to have on a regular basis? Yes, my family. <laughs> <laughs> the like most simple basic answer that I didn't see coming again. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, first off, my family, and then the food, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what food? What's what's the go-to? Like, what's the home cooked meal or what have you that is your uh, you must get every time you go back? Well, I have, I have a question for you. What do you know about Mexican food? Well, I know that Mexican food is different than uh, Tex-Mex. Yeah. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Um, and it depends on sort of like, we have a, a, a true Mexican restaurant near the school that I'm at where they'll serve like tongue and things of that sort mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and stuff. So it's not your, you're not, you know, it's not this generalized version, but uh, I don't know why. What's what, what do you mean by that? I don't know. Me <laughs> Mexican food is like Mexico is a very very big country. A lot of people yeah. don't know don't know it, but it's yeah, it's long. It's very it's long. Yeah. So depending on which area you are, you get the different types of food. Okay. In, okay. in the Caribbean, there's uh, there are typical flavors like pibil. Cochinita pibil is like a, a, a dish made with kind of pulled pork with seasoned with very specific 
with this thing called a shoti. And it, it's red. So you, you season that with a shiote, which is a kind of like a bit spicy and zingy and a, a little bit acid because you use vinegar as well. Okay. And then you eat that on top of a, well, you eat that in a taco or in a, like a round circle made with corn dough, which, it, which then goes fried and with beans and then you add like onion like pickled onion with chili oh that's that's delicious i've never i've never liked, i mean one i don't i don't like pickled stuff but some of the restaurants i go to has have pickled onions and that's the one i cannot get behind uh -huh. it's pickled onion. it's the like vinegary sort of pickled thing does not sit well with me oh, uh, no. <laughs> And so I know of it, like the, the sort of like pinky, purpley onions that show up in some of the well, stuff. Uh, oh. Like, I know everybody loves them, but that is, uh, what, you know, the, not because in Mexico you also have tamales, which yeah. are yep. kind of like a, it's like a cake, like a savory cake with different types of fillings. And it's like, they're, baked with, with vapor basically and they come wrapped in a corn um corn you know the, the leaves of a corn yep. yep you use them to bake the tamales in or then you can have mole which is my best way of describing it is like a mexican curry it's not a curry well, but we, it's made eh? is, is the mole is it, that's the that's the chocolate one right Yes, but there are different types of mole. There, there's oh. mole verde. They're green. The green one is not made with, uh, with chocolate, but the the black one is made with chocolate. And um, each of them has diff very distinctive flavors. This is where, like, the the, I mean, one. I'm not anywhere near the border. Uh, so, so bear with me on that, but we're up in New England and, uh, they have stuff in this area, but it's definitely not as, uh, vibrant or, uh, what do I want to say? Like, uh, varied as mm -hmm. what you would get, uh, further South. Uh, my, my parents lived in Texas for a while. And so there were some like really, you know, traditional Mexican restaurants that were in the area, um, and and they would have all sorts of um, variables that were great, but we just don't get the same thing in in the area that we're in now, uh, or at least not in the same, uh, not not the amount of variety. Let's put no, it that way. No, and uh, in Mexico, as, as I'm telling you, that depends on where you are based. You you get different types of food. If you are in Baja California and Sonora, which is the north of Mexico. Um, People make lots and lots of barbecue. So there's a lot, lots of meat, meaty dishes. And if you're near the coast, you get to eat just big, massive, fat, delicious shrimp. So it really depends where, where you are, the kind of food that you're going to get. So, so what, is, what is the equivalent? Like what's your go-to while you're in England? Because I'm, I'm imagining they don't have great traditional Mexican food there. Uh, in in London, yeah. Or, uh, well, in the UK, there are places. Luckily, there's a tacos place near Brixton, where they make uh, really good tacos, different types of tacos, and you can eat typical Mexican cakes and stuff. Mm. And is it does it match what comes from home, or is it? Like yeah, they, yeah. Okay. I think it's owned by Mexicans, and it it feels and tastes uh, legit. Okay, okay, gotcha. Near Brixton, I can't remember the name right now. My best friend, she's the one who, who she took me there, and the tacos are really, really good. That's uh, my the the idea of 
a good taco right now is is getting to me and it's it's we're closing in on dinner time here and yeah so i have to uh, i haven't had dinner yet it's like it's late what time is it it's nine o'clock yeah you're you're five hour difference i think than, than what we are here yeah you are yeah this, this is way late for you yeah. um, i'm gonna see if i can pick in I'm trying to figure out, I still don't 100% know where this is going, like what he's going to be holding and what's going to be on this ground plane, but I'm going to get I, some textures in here. I don't know what's going on with this. And to be honest, I would probably start all over again. Um, that's I, that's another thing I, I would advise to people who <laughs> want to do illustration. Sometimes as my wise, wise supervisor, a uh, supervisor, told me you can't polish it hard <laughs> <laughs> is that part of the phd right there yes i'm gonna start the phd by saying you can't polish it hard by Mar martin salisbury <laughs> made it famous so that'd be that's not amazing honestly if you could fit that in there would they accept that just kidding if martin no <laughs> He doesn't like it when I say this, but it's honestly such good advice. Sometimes it's just better to start all over again. That's uh, the, the type of conversations I have in the classroom. Talking about polishing a turd is not uh, a, uh, is, is a conversation that comes up often. Let's put it that way. Or, or that kind of language is not anything that we would shy away from. Uh, but I'm also dealing with uh, a younger crowd probably that that okay. sort of makes sense yeah. uh, that, that makes sense i i deal with grown-ups like adults <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> adults who try to pretend that that's not a word that they're saying um mm. is there uh it, with the uh, teaching are, are most of the people that you're teaching relatively like adults i mean obviously if it's a master's program most of them have already been through uh, a lot of traditional school and things of the sort, but is there um, is there a distinct age range that you're teaching? No, no. Or working with. Rather? We have a, a very. A, I guess it's no. It's really very. Um, we have uh, people who had just graduated from uni. Okay. Uh, we have people who come from a different background who weren't necessarily doing um, illustration. Um, we have like maybe people who waited a few years before attempting to decide to do a master's degree yeah. course. Uh, it just Basically, all of them are adults, but different kinds of backgrounds. It keeps things interesting. You can see different approaches. People who come from fine arts, people who come who come from design school or history or, I don't know, it's just, it keeps things interesting. I think that's one of the cool things about illustration that um, different people will approach it will will have different approaches um, yeah well especially if there's a you know life experience and other things that come into play I mean, it's one of the reasons why you hear a lot of people say like don't go directly into master's programs or into you know furthering your education until you get some work under your belt or until you sort of gone out and experienced a lot of stuff that does come back to influence you mm -hmm. and, your choices later on in your art making. Um, with uh, are, are you are you instructing anybody that's older? Yes. Yes. Is that weird. Um, no, no, I don't. I don't think so. Okay. Um, it's just like you need to accept that sometimes you will instruct instruct someone who is older but has less experience than you yeah and sometimes you will instruct someone who is younger but just 
insanely talented. <laughs> That's uh, that happens on a regular basis for me. There's yeah. there's some yeah. students that walk through the door that I'm perplexed as to how they have their skills so early in life because I definitely yeah. did not. Uh, yeah. I you know I thought I did, but I didn't. Uh, let's put it that way. Neither did I. Uh, I had to polish and polish and yeah. polish the skills. Yeah. Destroying many turds. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a word I was not expecting to show up again, but it did. Sorry. It did. No, it's fine. It's I mean, it's nice late. Time. It's it's nine p.m. for me. It's kind of acceptable to use this language. <laughs> what What time do you normally work in the studio? Uh, um, I start late. I start at maybe ten. And I end up late around eight o'clock. What? Where is your studio? In my house. <laughs> is it? Um, is it a like proper studio in the sense of like it's a distinct room for art making, or is yes. it? Okay. Yes, it's a proper studio. For many years, I didn't have a proper studio. I was just working in my own bedroom. And even even as I moved to England, I was using my bedroom as a studio. I mean, I was a student. and um, But now that my partner and I moved into a house, I get to have my own, my own yeah. studio. Yeah. Which is nice, to be honest. <laughs> you get to finally let loose and... Uh... Uh, make a mess and not have to worry about cleaning it up afterwards for the other people that have to use that space? Yes, I know, because I, I do like keeping the space tidy. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, okay. I just thought there's a, um, uh, a couple of questions here. My wife asks, uh, do you like the books by uh, Clotilde Perrin, the the house of Madam M, oh, oh, yes. et cetera. I could see, I could definitely see that being something that would be up your alley, uh, given the choice. Uh, and then uh, what's, I don't know what that means, one of them, but um, Illustrated asks, uh, uh, where did the idea for Gustavo come from? And I know that we covered that somewhat at the beginning, but was there a, a distinct, uh, uh, like, were you a shy kid? Was that something that, you know, you, you, the the book itself, obviously there's some history there with, with something, but like how much of those books, because you mentioned like cooking and things of the sort when it comes to the uh, Layla, um, but was was the idea of Gustavo about shyness first and then the the ghost came to be, or did you have an attachment to ghosts first? And the shyness came from that. Uh, the story is funny. Uh, in so in 2016, I was a little bit addicted to Twitter. <laughs> okay. okay. And I had a I created like I I love I love so much um, medieval imaginary, like okay. weird marginalia. Um, images and I thought those were very funny so I created like a fake account like a fake Twitter account which was more like a character it was like a I, I sound mad when I say it but it was <laughs> something I was just exploring um, it's like a fake it was like a princess which was kind of of part princess, part demon, part witch. And I would just tweet as if I was her, like doing my everyday life things like, oh, instead of playing with my dog pet, I was playing with my dragon pet. And I was going out with my friends who were witches. It was like a like a weird journal kind of thing. And uh -huh. I, it was really fun. I was I was having lots and lots of fun. <laughs> and sometimes I would just I would just 
kind of reflecting about what does it mean to be a monster? What is a monster? And um, so one of my tweets um, was about the reason why ghosts wear sheets. And I, I was just thinking that, well, you know, ghosts wear sheets because they're shy. So they kind of use that to try and hide. And, and I thought, ah, that can be, that could be a, a fun idea for, for, for a picture book. Maybe I can do a picture book of a, of a child who is wearing a, a sheet because he or she is just really, really shy, but actually he wants to make friends. But then as I was actually working on the book, like the story turned out to be very, very different. And it's based on, like, the story is based on my personal experiences. When I was, when I was in kindergarten, I, I just, I couldn't understand how people could make friends. <laughs> how other children were just able to say hello yeah. and play around with other children. That was, that was a total mystery to me. <laughs> and you somehow figure it out though at some point yeah when, uh... <laughs> I, I, just like gustavo making art helped me to uh -huh. to make friends i found found people who had interests who, who had shared interests and um that's why he he make he he's a musician um because i thought i want him to to have something that he wants to share with with someone else and there's nothing better than to share the things that you're really passionate about with others uh, at least that's my experience and that's what i was trying to convey when i, I yep. made the book the um the idea of uh What was I say? The idea of the the shy factor and a ghost. I, like I've seen a bunch of books out there that are ghost books, and there there's some of them that are are very cute, like the Rebecca Green one. I assume that you you've seen that yeah. one. The how, uh, what is it? How to make friends with a ghost yeah. and things of the sort. Um, but the the idea of the shy ghost is so good, just because it's so like everybody just assumes that ghosts don't have uh, or can go up and scare anyone or anything of the sort and like to throw that out the window and say, you know, ghosts are actually shy. It's such a fun sort of twist to throw into it. Yeah. But it's, it's, it was very obvious to me in a way. <laughs> it was, I'm sorry, you said obvious? Yeah, yeah. I, I, it kind of was obvious to me that ghosts were shy. Once I wrote that tweet, it's like, yeah, that's, that's what ghosts are they they're shy <laughs> i don't know they, they are was... meant to be yes they are they are meant to be uh uh secluded and only come out when they have to exactly it kind of worked as a metaphor you know how you use some animals to to convey certain stereotypes like in in books uh, i, I yep. thought we could do the same or i could do the same with monsters that's what i'm bringing was there uh was there ever a a frankenstein book or frankenstein's monster book no, no so far i haven't i haven't come up with a like i think the closest i've come up with with a frankenstein like book is a, a project that i had which which is called monster uh, it, it's like a part bunny, part monster kind of creature, but I haven't figured out mm, mm, the story of, of that character. But it, it's not like it, I'm just going to wake up so, and suddenly uh, find out what's going to happen with that book. I would need to sit down and work on it a bit. Yeah, work on it a bit. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to find if I have any swatches that will work for 
a couple of moles or like uh, I need the equivalent of like a witch's mole on this character. I'm trying to find the right color for it. I can find a witch's mole? Oh, like, I like the fingers. <laughs> yeah, he's got, he's a little gorilla-esque, I realized, or like chimpanzee-esque. I'm trying to find, find, like, if I give him, like, a little something here that's got, uh, making him feel more witch-like or something of the sort that we'll get there, but um, I'm trying to figure out other colors I can throw in the mix, too. Uh, how often... How often do you, um, whoa, sorry. Uh, how often do you paint late? Like, does your schedule force you sometimes to have to work late into the night? Mm, I try not to because I am very, very tired by the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but, but I, when I was finishing Vlad, I had to, I had to stay late. A, a few, a few days, um, but I really, really try not to because I, I, I think I need my my wrist to be able to be functional. Yeah, <laughs> and to be able to enjoy what I'm doing as well. Sort of, uh, as as I would say, I need my beauty sleep. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <once in a while. laughs> totally. It, it, hasn't, it hasn't worked out in my favor yet, but someday, someday that will. Uh, manifest itself um <laughs> is is your is your schedule pretty packed for for the year already like do you have yeah i mean obviously the, the phd stuff but are there other things that are sort of on the horizon that you no, have to uh, wait for? To, to be honest just having the phd means that i need to use a lot of my hours and time and energy uh figuring that out and then the rest it's trying to figure out my my project with walker books which i'm in the middle of as, as i've told you trying to convince my publishers to let me make a scary book <laughs> well when you say scary book what is, i mean i just i want to find out what does scary entail to you because your version of scary and my version of scary might be two totally different things so when you say scary, what does that actually mean? Well, it means like a kind of a, um, yeah, obviously what, what is scary is very personal and we, we have different ideas of what scary is. Yeah. But I just want to make, make a picture book that has a, an ending that is a bit, not happy it's it's really not a happy ending what it has <laughs> it's grim and it's part of why i think it's fun <laughs> is it when you say not happy meaning like someone, uh, someone dies basically <laughs> oh okay okay yeah now we're talking yeah now exactly we're talking. <laughs> i know okay this. i know it's like scary in the sense of like when you turn a page it just sort of like it's a a uh, jump scare kind of like boo kind of situation or if it's scary mm. that like might keep you up at night thinking a little too much so, no 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 okay. i mean yeah I so think, you want to think... terrorize kids i got you i got you i do <laughs> they don't let me <laughs> i would have liked to be terrorized as a kid well it's funny though is if you go look at stuff like john clausen's like the skull Mm. Like that's got some pretty scary moments in it for for a little kid to you know experience. But I also know that you know it does have sort of a not necessarily a happy ending, but it it doesn't end on a a death. But it is about dead people, and things of the sort. Uh, yeah. But but I get the I get the sense of of sort of where you're going now. Um, I think it's yeah. Um, it's this this thing that I called happy horror, <laughs> where you use elements that are scary, but you're not necessarily trying to terrify your, uh, your audience. Yeah. Whereas horror with, with, with horror, you're actually trying, like the end goal of horror is to terrify the audience. And that's what I kind of want to do, but I don't know if that's something that. Yeah. 
And that may not be a candle wick. Yeah. But <laughs> that's probably yeah. something at that point. Um, do you do you have publishers in mind for that you would aim that towards, or is it sort of just you got to write it first and then figure that out? Well, I already wrote it. I'm just. I'm, oh, I'm, okay. I'm, to I'm talking to Walker Books to see if they, if we can do it together because it's also kind of like a difficult to make kind of book, uh, production wise. So you're, just um, making, you're making it hard yeah. on everyone, huh? I, I'm making it hard. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I am. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't, if if it doesn't happen, well, I'll make something else. But yeah, I, like, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, like, I know it's like, not an easy sell for anyone. Yeah, like <laughs> make it hard. I like the idea of, of challenging convention. That's that's a okay in my book. Um, <laughs> but it's a matter of yeah, you got to get the right publisher. Mm -hmm. um, with with stuff like the uh, Gustavo series, um, uh, did I just? Oh, I just lost one. So they did do spot gloss and and whatnot on on some of those. It looks like. At least the books that I have here. Um, was that your choice, or was that something that you had to convince them, or did they just come to you and say, "Hey, we're putting a special no. feature"? They, they, they told me they were going. Uh, we're talking about embossing and all, all of the nice design details, right? Yep. yep. Um, no, I didn't have to convince them. They. I, I designed the cover and they were like, oh, we can do some embossing. And then the, the glowing, uh, like the finishing can can be like this. And I was like, oh, fancy. I was not expecting this. <laughs> I, I love the, all of the attention to the detail that they, they pay to the design of the books. The paper choice, typography, that was that was their suggestion and then and louise my the designer that works with me she she nailed the colors like it's really difficult to like sometimes to to get the colors that you really want to on on paper yeah uh, and she did it and i'm just really really grateful the uh yeah i mean the colors in particular are like the star of those books to me so let me ask you a real quick question. If you take a second to look, should I make a little bug that he's holding or should I make it be a house? A what? A bug or a house that he's holding in his fingers? A house. House. Okay. Definitely. Okay. So it's a, it's a, <laughs> my wife was upstairs yelling out house too at the same time. Yes. Um, all right. All right. We will make it a house. Good choice. But, yeah. You, uh, you win her approval and uh in your decision making it's a matter of i just got to figure out how to make it a little better. excellent um and then i gotta do a bunch of houses down here and up here and then we can we can wrap of some sort with all of this um with all that you are working on right now and and the um the book ideas and whatnot that you have are you do you find time to sit down and write or is that harder to come by at this point do i what do you have time to write to sit down and and you know write out stories or are you primarily focused on uh the stuff that you've already written and like in other words right now i have a hard time sitting down or, or dedicating time to writing it's never mm -hmm. a priority for me and so i know some people say like well once a day i have to write this much or this many pages and uh they give themselves a goal for writing I, uh, uh for the phd or just creative kind of yeah. writing in oh, general I was, I was thinking creative i don't write my stories wait <laughs> i sit down and sketch them oh okay okay <laughs> So you sketch, you sketch right then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was like, wait a second. You wrote your stories. So there's no author. Yeah. I, I was mean, like, did you just. Yeah. But I, I, I do the images first. And then okay. once I have a lot of images and I can visualize the sequence. Then you put the words. 
Okay. Yeah. That's uh, okay. That makes sense. You just threw me for a loop again. I'm just like, you don't write your stories. I'm like, <laughs> you're good. No, I'm a pro at this point. Like, what's happening here? Um, it was just throwing me. Uh, let's see. Okay, if I put a house there, that's easy enough. I can do that. Let me put that down. This is the challenge of doing something without a plan is all of a sudden it's like now I'm getting to the point where I have to start putting in details and make it actually work. And that's not always possible in these situations. Yeah. But, I didn't I didn't have a plan either. I just started doing yeah. something and I thought it was gonna look very clean by the end of it, but it just a bit I love messy. it though. It's okay. That weird, the, yeah, the blue bird towards the top with I'm assuming sunglasses on yeah. uh, yes. and the like some of the decisions there are some of the strange decisions like the skull with just legs there's no arms mm -hmm. that that's running <laughs> along is so good so it's not it is it is making sense to me at least I don't know if uh, if those yeah. walking home are going what is going on here but uh, they're they're allowed to think that of mine because mine's chaos right now um, you're good it's really neat and well organized and thought to me. Uh, uh, not so, so much. Just, <laughs> it's you're seeing it. You're seeing it's uh, nice and small on screen. That's that's what I'm gonna chalk it up to. You. It's funny say, uh, how when you are the one making the sausage, you can yep. see all, the, all of the defects. <laughs> People on the altar are like, "Oh, it looks good to me." <laughs> oh, this is this, this is like. I, I think that's the challenge with all of these when I do this, especially because I'm working with cut paper and glue and things of the sort. There's all sorts of details that show up in this that are um, like messy, mm -hmm. just, you know, colors and, and paint and smudges and things of the sort that I have to go back into Photoshop and really get rid of. Uh, but the base level is at least there. Let's put it that way. Like right mm -hmm. cleaning up some some smudges but i'm gonna go put teeth all the way around on this guy so it looks a little bit more scary i guess mine's turning into less of a scary cute and more of a strange scary yeah me too i don't see, i don't see the cute in here <laughs> it'll get, get there it'll get there should i put teeth all the way around so it actually goes like i have a look uh. Or should yes. they bottom? Yeah, I, I like the idea of them going all the way around. I can always cover it up if I don't like it. Um, what you mentioned doing the, um, I can't think of it now, the type of uh, printmaking with the copper plate. Uh, um, uh, Aquatons? Aquatons. Uh, are there other like materials and things that you've tried to incorporate into your artwork in general that uh, you know like whether it be for picture books or not but things that you've been playing around with uh, materials that I try to incorporate well I th think that the project that I'm trying to make I would like to do it with gouache and just mixed media again yeah. but in a work in a different way not not with layers I, i'd like to do wet layers i've been working with dry layers and i'm very comfortable with dry layers but i'd like to try some wet layers and see what kind of mess i can come up with <laughs> um, based on uh, what you're doing here i can get very messy yeah yeah, yeah i kind of I kind of, I would, I, I would love to be messier. I think my work is very neat. I'd, li I'd like to be messier, but it's difficult. <laughs> Let's see. Is that? Yeah, that's weirder. Okay. Loose, loosen up. I'm gonna make a tongue that sticks out here too. I think I need a strange tongue that sticks out of his mouth. Anything to take it, I want to make sure it doesn't register as very muppety. And so I can get far enough away from that. And so I'm trying to find ways to to change that up. And so like, 
a weird tongue that sticks out will help. Um, how, how, long, uh, how long have you been doing collage? Uh, I've been doing the collage thing since uh, last winter, oh. roughly. I, I started out with primarily uh, like acrylic and uh, gouache and things of the sort. And I did a, a gab and doodle here with uh, Brianna Carzu, uh, who I will credit to the, to the end of time for getting me excited about collage. Even mm. though it was sort of like, she was coming on, I was like, I've always been tempted to try collage in my work. And she does collage with her stuff. Um, and it's it's a very s sort of simplified like flat collage that she does. Not to say that it's, it's easy of any sort, but it's it's much more graphic than mm. even what I, I do. And I I had her on, and I got very excited by it uh, fairly quickly. To be honest, I was I was all of a sudden like this is fun, and realized that I was kind of doing collage style painting uh, from a majority of the time before that anyways and now it's just a matter of the process is a little bit easier for me in other words like one of the things that i i really love about collage is the idea that um the shape is hard to be precise with if i use the right materials yeah and so like having that that idea of coming into it and as i start to cut I make decisions that sometimes are not uh, uh, or show up in interesting ways on the work, I think is, is what I love. And so I, my scissors are my paintbrush now. Of sort of, mm. Honestly, I've realized like I don't go through paint the same way that I used to. I used to go through so much paint mm. and it's really sort of died down over time because of the way that I work now. So I don't know if it's cheaper because I have to buy more tracing paper and things to actually put the paint on, but <laughs> it at least is, you know, in, in a way it, it's basically, it just becomes, yeah. I'm, I'm painting with scissors. I kind of forgot uh, about that. Last time I did collage was maybe 10 years ago. Yeah. Like I probably sat down and do collage and you're right. There's this element of cutting out without being, very precise and you just need to accept and improvise yes make changes yes. as you're working improvisation is a key key element to everything that i do with artwork and so that, that the idea of working with uh scissors and whatnot now obviously you can get like exacto blades and things to get super precise with your cuts but i've, I've already ruled that i'm not allowed to do that unless i have to cut out a hole <laughs> um, purely just because it's hard to cut out a hole in paper without or with scissors um, and so I have rules essentially to force myself to have to be reactive to odd shapes and yeah. odd designs that go along with it so um, yeah I think it's important to have rules to avoid overworking something it's so easy to well how do you how do you know because I mean you're you're jumping from uh this like uh black and white pencil and ink and and crayons and things of the sort into photoshop and then photoshop you have till the end of time yeah. to be able to sit there yeah. and futz with it how do you know with your own work when to stop um that's a good question i sometimes actually i do more layers than i end up using and I know when to stop when probably when I think, oh, I don't need to use any more layers. Let's just <laughs> leave it here because if I, yeah, like if I, if I carry on putting things, it, it looks worse. So if I, if I reach that moment, I, I know it's time to stop. Yeah. Like I think you... I'm, I'm nearing stopping time with this image now basically yeah, that threshold of some yeah. sort i know that yeah. it's a question that shows up on on here at least a lot of, of people asking like how do you not overwork or how do you make the decisions that you make with your artwork um 
and it's a question that I ask of a lot of people too, just that idea of like, what is too much or how do you define too much in your work? Have you ever had someone um, uh, in turn or do anything with your artwork after the fact where you've had to explain your process to them? No, never. Have you? I, I had a couple interns at one point and it's a very hard thing to explain. In, in my case, it was very hard to explain when to stop getting rid of texture in Photoshop and you know cleaning up work and when to let it be. Mm -hmm. uh, and part of that is because it's such a textural sort of world I like to play in, it's what is a good texture and what's a bad texture. Mm -hmm. um, and that was very hard to explain, but I could imagine in yours too, just the idea of like the, the type of work that you make and the textures and the Photoshop and the layers and like when and where to stop has got to be hard to sort of relay to someone else uh, or, or to explain to someone yeah, else. Uh, yeah, definitely. Is there, is there any point in which uh, you think that uh, you would ever have an intern or have someone that could help you out? Have you ever considered it? Mm, I have thought, I've thought about, oh, I would love to have a, like a, like an assistant, but it would be mostly for sending emails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doing texts. Hey, <laughs> hey, sometimes that, that's okay for them. That, that, might, that sort of thing. Yeah. They might be okay with that. Just that idea of like just being around you and, and studying and learning from you might be enough to get them excited. Uh, I don't know. I think I would be really overwhelmed. I don't, I, you know, I, maybe I just, I'm not comfortable with the idea of telling someone how to work my way. I would, I would like, like when I have my students, I want them to figure out what they want to do for themselves. Yeah. Ideally. So. But that's why, that's why having someone that just does the emails, things of that sort, uh, is less challenging because you don't have to teach them how to draw like you. You just have to, you just yeah. teach them how to, uh, how to interpret, uh, what you're doing. Uh, or, or how to relay information to an art director or whatnot in text. Um, I, uh, I'm trying to look at the time here. We got 4.42, so technically this ends. You, you can, oh, I, sh I forgot to say this at the beginning too. You are allowed to jump off whenever you feel like it. You do not have to stay to the end. Um, yeah. I, I end up going until probably about four hour range, so that's about six. Uh, yeah. What should be? You mentioned that, and I was like, "Well, I'll be done in an hour." But as you can see, I'm kind of. Nope, nope. There's uh there's people who have told me they're going to be on for an hour, and then they stay on for the f full four hours. Yeah. Uh, and it just depends. <laughs> like if you're in the mood and you feel like you're making, and you know, you just we're just chatting or whatever. It it really is just meant to be this sort of exploratory play. Um, then mm. it's. It can work out. I think um, I'm nearing the end, though. Not, yeah. oh, not sure. because we have said it, but because I think, yeah, I, I, I don't want to do more, oh, basically. Okay. Don't hesitate. Don't feel like you have to stay for any reason. Um, I, I appreciate the fact that you have given as much time as you have already towards, uh, towards the silliness that is uh, chatting with me and talking about nonsense and whatnot. Um, I enjoyed it. It, it. As I've said, it's something I hadn't done before, like just sitting sitting down and doodling, drawing, talking about stuff. That was enjoyable. Yeah. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad you got something out of it. And it's it not was. just. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> Well, not a problem. Um, well, why don't we why don't we wrap there? And I I or or I mean, you're welcome to stay as long as you want. Please, please, please stay as long as you want. I'm not going to put any pressure on you in any way. Um, but I was going to say uh, the the idea of I don't want you to to continue to work on something if you're uh, 
if you've hit that edge or you've hit that wall that no, uh, no i think i would just rather flip to the next page right now gotcha so, um, yeah i don't think there's m much more that i can do to this kind of horse with skulls <laughs> which is exactly what you thought you were going to make in be making when you came in right i know <laughs> you're like I thought I'm gonna draw some sort of mandrake or like a demon or something. It, I did this. I think I should do it more often. Just sit down and doodle. Draw. Yeah, that's why I think that's why challenges like um, you know Inktober are good. They do you... they, they take you to unexpected places, and that's something that everyone who's learning should do all the time. Now wait a second. Do you when you do Inktober? Do you do all of Inktober, or do you just pick? Like, do you do it from the beginning till the end, or are you someone who does just a couple of them and then sort of bows out? Uh, I I only attempted that twice. And um, the first time I did an Inktober, I was just I I was not sticking to prompts. I was just doing things with ink, and yep. I, actually I did like. Um, very simple shapes or i i drew on on things like leaves or eggs or my hand things that weren't necessarily paper and that was interesting and and that was enjoyable and then i attempted another inktober just doing again random props but yeah. i i could just do the first i think 10 days <laughs> it, it, I, I became too invested in it and it was like no i i, I am i'm finishing my picture book right now <laughs> so i i couldn't yeah. finish but i've never been able to stick those out of any sort to be able to see them through to the end no it's probably something i'd like to do again at some point when i'm not doing a phd yeah <laughs> <laughs> when you don't have so much on your plate that, that's eh? more manageable. Yeah, I'm just I, I'm gonna have so much time when I'm done with the PhD. Is there um, is there an expectation with the PhD about what you do with it afterwards? Like, is there conversations that you have about um, uh, like, like going out there and uh, teaching or or what have you? Or is that something that is sort of uh, you do what you do and, and wherever it leads you is okay? I, at the moment, I just want to finish it. Okay. <laughs> and then I'll see, I'll see what happens work-wise. I'll see if I apply for jobs, for teaching. Uh, but what I'm doing right now is, I think, the best because I'm teaching as, a, as an assistant lecturer which means I don't need to deal with any of the admin that, ah. the, that teaching entails. Yep. And I just get the fun part of seeing students and <laughs> following their projects. <laughs> it's <was> really good. <laughs> so if I can keep it like this, that would be great. <laughs> you get to, it's like uh, being a grandparent where you get to have the kids for a day and then yeah. uh, you get to hand or them the, at the end and say, the, good luck. The cool aunt, uh, the cool auntie as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I gave, I gave all these kids a bunch of candy, and now you got to deal with them for the rest of the night. Exactly. Uh, one of those situations. <laughs> um, let me see. I'm gonna yeah. see if I can get this. How much of this piece can I rip up? This is the challenge of collage. This is where Photoshop would come in handy. I'm gonna try to actually remedy a piece here that i don't want anymore but i don't uh, know if back to what i had actually you know what i can just cover it up yeah that's that's bet is cover it up it's, it it's uh -huh. funny because i don't see why you 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 want to cover it i would just leave it like that but well i realize i don't like the yellow down here because i like it as the sun mm. so i'm it's it was it's going to be this hill, but then I was like, I don't want to have to do all this stuff on the hill. So I'm going to put these, uh, uh, like, 
Godzilla spikes. Ah, yeah, see. <laughs> on the back of them, but I want it to be white underneath so it, it doesn't compete with, uh, or so it doesn't feel like there's some sort of ground plane there. So I just got to cover it up. So we will get there. This is, I, I feel like that's a statement that I make about my work all the time is we will get there. Um, let me make sure I haven't missed any questions. I know that there's all sorts of questions that roll in throughout this. Uh, let's see. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah. Uh, I think. Let me go all, all the way back. I'm going to go way back there because I know at the beginning when we first started up, I missed some. Yeah. Uh, I guess we can answer one or two and then I'll, I'll head uh, off because I'm hungry. <laughs> Let me end you on one, uh, one good one. Okay, so we'll, well, I'll just pick a, I'll pick a question of my own then, in this case, and you can just wrap up uh, with the one last statement. We can do two more questions. Okay, um, so if you were to do this all over again, if you were to, you know, decide to go into picture books and you were to go and get the degrees and all those kind of things, what would be the one thing that you would do different? I, I would be less, less concerned about a final image and I would do a lot more experiments and ruin a lot more work and use all of the good materials and spend them and use all of the sketchbooks even if they even if you make horrible drawings in a in a really expensive sketchbook, yeah, <laughs> I would, yeah, I would do that. Just don't worry about it and make. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then, and what's the one thing you wouldn't do? We'll end on this. This is the last question. What's mm -hmm. the one thing, the one thing that you would absolutely do again? The the one thing I wouldn't do again? Uh, well, no. What's the one? I, I asked it poorly the first time. What's the one thing you would absolutely do again? I would, would absolutely do again? Yep. I probably, I would absolutely do again the, the MA in children's book illustrations. Um, that was such an enjoyable time of my life. I was having fun. I was trying out new new things. I was just focusing on learning. Um, I think the enjoyable thing about doing the MA was that yes, I was concerned about having finished projects by the end of each module, yeah. but at the same time, I was just trying out new things. I had. I made time for myself to learn new stuff and um, that's a luxury I I don't have anymore as often as I would like to even if I if I'm making picture books now all the time I'm also doing PhD <laughs> like yeah. Ah, yeah. I, I just want time to play around without any specific goals or objectives or research topic in mind <laughs> yeah, I mi I miss that a little bit. <laughs> Less parameters. Mm -hmm. of yeah, makes sense. Okay. Well, we'll leave it at that. We'll we'll end on that question, uh, and we'll let you go get the sleep uh, that you need. The food uh, that I need. <laughs> oh, and food. That's right. You haven't had dinner uh, yet. I'm a late person. I usually I stay up late, but food is kind of necessary yeah no go get yourself <laughs> something to eat uh i really really appreciate you taking the time today to to chat with me and make art with me and uh i will post this uh both to uh instagram and to um youtube uh when uh, we're done and so people go back. Well. yeah oh. we just <laughs> People have been requesting it. All right. And so it'll go up on YouTube um, and it'll give people a chance to go and at least rewind and save where they were, whereas Instagram 
can't do that. Um, but uh, I really do appreciate you taking the time today and, and spending it with me chatting and, and talking nonsense and talking about books and talking about all the wonderful things that we get to do as illustrators. Yeah, so That was great. I had fun. And um, I don't know, I, I'd like to do it again. It's just liberating, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this, well, this thing we've been talking about, about just trying out new stuff and sitting down and drawing. That's what I did right now. And... I'm kind of grateful because I, otherwise I don't know if, it, if I would have done it. So thank you. Not a problem. I wonder if uh, at some point maybe we should do a, a one of these where we have on. Um, uh, you can have up to four people. Uh huh. On one of Ooh. these, myself included in that. But I wonder if we did a material swap one day, where I sent a material to someone, they sent a material to me, and and whatnot back and forth and we actually had to work with the new material that we've never worked with before uh, uh, live on it. uh <laughs> i don't it may go over horribly yeah that sounds cool that sounds that, yeah that, I'm, I'm up for that <laughs> we can do that we can do a, uh uh i'll have to figure out what to call it um but we could try something like that at some point uh a material swap uh date of some sort so um otherwise you go get some food mm -hmm. take, take uh the evening and relax a little bit you've worked hard uh oh. and in both a artistic and uh what do i want to say audible way <laughs> that doesn't make any sense but i don't you know, know if i, I mean. was making much sense at times my brain was like but yeah well uh, you did, you did. You did absolutely fine. You did absolutely fine. Um, well, thank, thank you, you so much. All right. And we'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye. All right, folks. Well, Flavia takes off for the night. I'm going to finish. I just need to put in all these little houses and whatnot for a village down here that are being eaten up. And I'm going to put a little bit of that yellow in some locations here. I don't know exactly where. Um, I have to figure that out. But I want to get it so it's not just up there. I mean, I guess I could leave a little bit of ground plane here too. That would work. Um, but we will figure that out as we get there. But I need to first get these houses all mashed down in here. Okay, wait, what, what, uh, souffle, like a baby chicken with long hair. I'm missing all of what, oh, it's a bird? What, what's being asked here that people are talking about a bird? Oh, is it, oh, you're talking about Flavia stuff. Okay, I was like, I didn't know what that meant. Um, it's really throwing me for a loop. Uh, okay, let's see, I'm gonna get, this guy stuck down here. And I guess I could just cut off the bottom a little bit too. I don't have to go all the way to the bottom, but I'm trying to figure out how to like organize these. So these, oops, I need to get, get one more in underneath that. So let's do this. Maybe we'll put this one right. Do it like right there. That work. So we have our little plant village. Everything's so sticky. So sticky. in here I don't know what's going on upstairs but I can hear my my wife and son talking about things I don't know what that means but they're talking about things go oh, let's see is there enough adhesive down there that I can just stick that I don't know fight it there is impressive 
Let's see how many houses I'll have to cut out after this. And these will have rows on them. But right now, I just gotta get them down. In some sort of order. Uh, do I have any other houses that I pre-cut? Doesn't look like it. Let's get a couple more then. So, if anybody has any questions while we're watching me finish this up, please ask away. I'm trying to just finish this. Let's see. Just have to make it down to there. That's my end point right there. You asked one? Oh, because I'm not all the way to the bottom. That's fine. Let me see. Hold on a second. I'll. Uh, uh, ba, ba, ba. Someone says this is a great listen. Uh, LF Creative says that's Luke Flowers. Says great inspiration from you both as I work in the creative cave. Thank you for sharing these stories and insights. Yes, not a problem, Luke. Thank you for being cool. Uh, my wife and I were talking about how cool you are. Uh, Let's see, Josh Monkworth says, be self-critical and this is really hard are such great uh, corollaries for publishing. Yes, harder than what people think. Wait, oh, you know what? I'm like way up there. I didn't realize I was so far back. I scrolled to the top and I forgot to scroll back down to the bottom. Let me go back down to the bottom. Woo, there's a lot of people that joined. I wonder, is there way to find out how many people actually watched in total people watched in total uh where's the thing that you oh uh bill you asked uh and lauren i don't see the thing that you said you asked Oh, no, I don't think so. Just watercolor and gouache. But what type, I don't know. Um, Illustrated says uh, about the mixed media thing. Uh, I asked her that at the beginning, and I know you weren't here at the beginning, so I'll try to repeat uh, what was said. But basically, um, it's <laughs> done, and this is what floored me, it was done with essentially crayons and uh, things like um uh i don't want to say like black and white essentially dry materials all scanned into the computer and then made colorful uh via photoshop which to me is just like whoa, like mind-boggling uh that someone would go to that length uh but she does and more power to her i i you know that's impressive uh on so many levels um and so it's a laborious process uh, is what she does let's put it that way okay let's see i'm just trying to get the last little bit i put in one last little like blue house here and this is right here Now the question is, should I have any of these houses go around? Oh, that's kind of weird because then structurally it doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm not, not super sold on this, on the fact that you can see the, the, um, what do I say, the transparency of that ear right there, but I guess it's not that big of a deal. up okay so now that i got these down here i'm going to go and cut off excess and the reason i cut off that excess is so it doesn't flip up when i work on it so i just get rid of the excess tracing paper that sticks over the edge i just don't need it so bye bye okay 
Now that I got that, I need to put roofs on these. And then I need to, again, I need to get some of that yellow, some of that bright fluorescent yellow, which is fluorescent yellow. There it is. I'm going to put it in some other spots. Like, let me put it in the tongue a little, a little bit of dry brush. In there, in an interesting way. Like it rides along that tongue there. Blah, 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 blah. What I'll do is I will fix the black after I do this. But I'll get this. Yellow in there, like that. So you notice that. Put a little bit of. yellow on this house. So what I might actually do is go through and lighten that up. So I'm trying to draw your eye to specific things. Uh, let's see. Bring it down to the bottom here. Bop, 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 bop. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's see. Uh, souffle de liberté. De liberté. Uh, thank you so much because it really is very helpful how to relax in your, in your work. Oh, thank you. So, uh, let's see, question. How do you put away the uh, impression before the work? Wait, okay. Souffle de liberté. How do you put away the pressure before a work or a commission? Do you mean the pressure? I'm, I'm not sure what that means. Can you clarify that for me? I'd be happy to answer, but. Oh, there you go. Do you have a method to be uh, relaxed before a work? Um, oh, because you're French. Oh, I see how it is. I see it. No. Um, absolutely. There is um, to get the sort of when i'm working on stuff for a client is very different than when i'm working on stuff for me uh when i'm working on stuff for me i i am way less precious in general um when i'm working on stuff for a client uh i too i do tend to get maybe a little bit too um uh i don't know hyper fixated on things being perfect and maybe I need to sort of curb that in some sense. Um, but some of that is just like, I want to make sure that I match what I gave them in a sketch. And so sometimes that gets in the way a little bit. Um, but one of the things that I think has been very helpful for me, and I think Claudia sort of mentioned this as well, is the idea of just um, having time to play and practice and not have some intended goal is enough that it can get you in the mindset of, you know, loosening up. And so when you actually go back to work on something that is for a client, you're not as, um, you're not as rigid in a way, but I mean, obviously that, that doesn't hold true every time and, and it definitely doesn't hold true for me every time um, because there are times where I do definitely get too tight or or I, I fixate on you know small little details that really are not that important to the overall project. Um, but, but I think some of that is just plain old practice and getting used to it by doing it quite often. Uh, and really, you know, some of that is just you have to give yourself the freedom to be able to play. So when you get the opportunity to do something that is structured you are not coming at it with a different mindset that you're you already know what you can get away with play wise and so like for me play wise right now i am much more interested in uh, uh, like creating interesting textures and colors and things of the sort so when i go to paint 
or work on something for a client, I'm more uh, uh, expressive, let's put it that way. And so like some of the books I've worked on that were the best books, in my opinion, from my repertoire uh, are the ones that are a little bit more expressive and allow me to be uh, a little bit more playful. Um, and so like if I can paint on the surface, I'm going to take that opportunity because that automatically makes my work more playful. If I can, and when I say paint on the surface, meaning I don't, um, I don't pre-mix all my colors at a time. I don't mix the colors all that much on the uh, palette that's all done on surface. Um, that's, you know, a method that works for me that may not work for everybody, but that idea of like being ready and able to sort of respond is huge for me. Um, okay, let's see. Here's a good question here. Let's see, towards the bottom. It is from Jeremy Holmes Studio. With your collage process being more improvised, how tight are your initial sketches for a book? Do you sketch using collage? Um, so all the books I've done, this is what's weird, is all the books I've done have not been with collage. Um, all the collage stuff has come uh, in more recent work. Um, and it's very, very similar. So there's nothing that's like uh, all that abstract between the two. There, there definitely is a connection, but I'm trying to see if I have any sketches around anywhere. I might have a sketch. Hold on. Let me see if I can find a sketch. There's probably one sitting around here somewhere. Uh, let's do a flat file. Hold on. Let's see. Here's a sketch. So, these are sketches I did for uh, a penny's worth. And so they're, they're all done digitally. Uh, and cleaned up and whatnot. Um, but I'm also a lot tighter in this because I was painting. Um, but this is about how detailed my sketches get. They don't get much more refined than this. They don't get much looser than this. I'm trying to get looser than this as I go along. Um, and so uh, with that idea of like basic blocking, and I know that type is going to like on this page this is a single page with dollar bill and penny and the type was going to go in between the legs here. And I, you know, the purse shifted a little bit here, the hand shifted a little bit as I worked on it, but it wasn't, um, it, it's relatively close, partially because this book itself has type that shows up in all these little pockets throughout. So I have to be extra careful that I'm not covering up uh, spots or somehow manipulating a piece wherein I, I cover up a spot where the type has to go later. So that one's sort of a, a more finicky um, challenge than some of the other books, but um, the collage thing, basically it's, it's if you go back and look at my portfolio, the stuff that's collage and stuff that isn't, they kind of are very similar. And so I don't think there's any art director out there that's gonna go, hey, like in fact, I had a, a illustration gig, um, uh, you, I'm gonna say, I don't know, I'm, couple months ago something like that we're in the um, uh, they asked me to do it and I said oh awesome just so you know I work in collage now and they go oh well we don't want you doing collage we want this old style that you have which sounded fine uh, and then I was like you know I really want to do collage and when I asked them to send me work that they liked of mine or what style they were thinking they sent me pieces that were actually collaged and they just didn't know it um, because to me, they looked very different, but to them, it just was the same old work that I'd always been doing. Um, so, uh, Andrea Lomanich Cuevas. Sure. That, uh, that's my best guess. Uh, <laughs> how long does it take me to do an illustration, uh, to finish a children's book illustration? Um, that's a, a challenging question. The reason why that's a challenging question is it really depends on uh, what kind of illustration we're talking. Um, and what I mean by that is um, if it's a full uh, spread versus a, a um, 
vignette versus a single page versus, you know, it could be all sorts of um, variables that are in there. But as a, as a go-to, my standard, um, my standard is basically I can finish a spread per day. Maybe a little bit less than that. Sometimes it's a two day thing. Um, and that's a full spread with, um, you know, characters and all the, the fun things that come with it. Now, I want to, I want to add to that though, because people might go, oh, wow, that's that, you know, how do you know that kind of thing? I actually don't work on, um, individual spreads though. So what I do is I work on individual characters or individual elements that show up in those, uh, spread so like let's say i have a monster like this that shows up throughout the book i would go paint the monster on every page and the reason why i would do that is just for consistency of color and texture and things of the sort and then i'd paint the other things around it after the fact um, and so i'm not working on a single spread at any given time i'm working on multiple spreads at any given time which makes it a little bit harder um, to sort of um, track anyway um so but my previous to that previous when i was working on sort of like spreads at a time it was about a day maybe a day and a half and when i say a day i mean about six hours somewhere in that range um i work relatively fast to to finish a piece so um uh bill Estrade says did you tell them it was collage and did you go ahead with the job uh i did do the job uh and i told them that i do collage and they when i when they pointed that stuff out I actually wrote back and said, oh, those actually are collage. And they were like, oh, oh okay. And that was pretty much it. It was, it was settled at that point. And they said, as long as you can match that style, then we're good. Uh, and so I was able to uh, just sort of go ahead with the job as is. Uh, there were, I kind of mixed it a little bit. There's some points where I painted a little bit more. Um, but for the most part, it was exactly what I'm doing now. Um, and they uh, came back and asked for the art director came back and asked for another uh, illustration piece after the fact. Uh, so obviously they liked it enough. Um, but I'm part of the problem with the book stuff is just I haven't had a book deal that is a new um, or has a new approach to it. So I haven't had the chance to really jump into um, collage with a book. It's it's the book that I'm working on next in the series is has a set style and that was done not with collage but with um other uh with just paint essentially and so i have to kind of match that style accordingly if that makes sense so right now i'm just walking in these rooms These are my house symbols. So just how I draw houses. I'm just trying to create texture and color. Not all these roofs are going to be opened in. Dogs are going nuts upstairs. This one. I don't know why I did them all on that same side, but I did. What other questions do people have? What else can I help? This one this way because I can. I have some predefined shape that has to be the other direction. I'm happy with the texture on the uh, monster. I 
I cannot read. I need to do more of that so it's less just flat color and more like textural and find new ways to work with it. Let's see. Okay, go this way. And I need to do maybe one more roof here. Yeah, let's see, I'll do this. I'll do that one and I'll do this one. Like this. And we'll see how that feels. Whether I can leave those last couple sort of unroofed. Posca markers. Or the bin. I kind of like the fact that sometimes they go down great and sometimes they don't. Like if I have too much glue down, but when I do the glue thing, they leave some little streakiness to it. And sometimes that's kind of fun. Uh, let's see. So, uh, okay, there's questions here I need to get back to. Let's see. Uh, um, Austria Pen uh, Toha, do you have top three artists that inspire you? Um, number one, uh, I absolutely, well, okay, so I'm going to pull some weird references. Um, one of them is a guy named James Buddy Snipes, who is a uh, folk artist from the south of um, the States, who does some really amazing stuff. Um, not anything like this, um, but just does some cool, uh, some, some very, very cool um, sort of folk art, found object, etc. Uh, and I love his stuff because of the texture side of things. Um, I am a big fan, obviously, of Christian Robinson. I think anybody that isn't is uh, nutty. Um, I think his work is, is brilliant. Um, I am a big fan of, let's see, I need one more. One more. Um, I'm trying to think of, there's, uh, I mean, the, there's, there's the big names like Isabel Arsenal, uh, Francita, uh, Fran Sala, Francisco. Why am I drawing a blank on the first name? Franc oh, uh, Felicita Sala. There we go. Um, I don't know why that was so hard for me to think of that name. Um, the I'm trying to think of other uh folks that are like go tos for me. Um, but I'm trying to pick out other ones that are like. more strange um i like an artist there's an artist named Souther salazar that does really interesting work again not kid stuff but just like interesting textures and no compositions and stuff nomi bola uh kid the illustrator um uh one of my favorite what oh yeah Alan Alberg and Bruce Ingman, their work together is always really fun. Um, one of the ones that um, uh, I love that just conceptually as as an art piece and um, uh, I, I think is super interesting is uh, it's a book called I Can Only Draw Worms and it's not drawn by someone who is uh, a standard artist it's actually by an author and it's them trying to draw worms uh <laughs> because that's the only thing they can draw and i forget who it is my wife hopefully will look it up or maybe i can go look real quick hold on i'll go look and see if i can find it uh it is by uh let's see here it is 
Will Mabbitt. There you go. Thank you. Uh, and it's super funny and not even really about the artwork, but the artwork makes it even better because of how simplified it is. Um, and I don't know. There you go. Uh, let's see. Okay. Next question was uh, from the limb, the, this limb in life. Do you find it easy to be objective when looking at your own work? Uh, somewhat. Uh, I think part of the challenge for me is um, I've I've gotten to this point where like I'm it's a very hard point to get to honestly but getting to the point we're in when you look at your work you don't uh, obsess over every single detail because you know not all of it's going to matter in the end so what I mean by that is uh, when I go print any of my work or like a book comes out I know half the details that I put in it are not going to come through in the finish. And so like there's a threshold where it's, I don't have to do as much as I once uh, thought I did. You know, I don't have to put in every single detail and not every texture is going to show up. Um, and if I want it to, I have to go over the top to get it to happen. Um, but, uh, I'm, I'm maybe a little less precious than once I, what I once was with all of my work. And so, um, I don't know if that, if that helps or makes sense, but, um, I just, I'm not as careful as I used to be with all of it purely because I don't think, uh, half of it shows up in the finished product anyways. Uh, let's see, let me get this. I'm trying to up the ante on this sun here. And I saw there were more questions and I will get to them, but let me get this sun nice and bright. Uh, okay. Uh, how did you make this texture? Uh, texture was made by taking a dark swatch. So let's, let's take let's do a little sample here on some scrap paper. I assume you're talking about the fur texture. Uh, fur texture by taking no kitty. This is not a this is not a space to play. You go down there. Uh, I would take black paint and I would take a brush. Uh, let's see if I can find the right brush here. Let's see. Is is it this one? May have been this one. Uh, so dry brush, getting most of the paint off or most of the water out of the brush taking um, the paint, putting it down, and then I would just pull, and because I'm working on a textured paper already because it's warped from uh, it being tissue paper and water having been applied to it, it's already got some wrinkles to it. Then I come back and just add some various lines and sort of push the level. If I want more specific, sharper lines, add a little bit more water into the mix that might be you know a little bit less dry brush towards the top but then I got some texture and then what I did was I cut it out to the shapes that I needed and good to go so if I take something like this and I come in here and I let it dry for a second and I come in and go there's a fun Cave. Ooh, it's a cave with some stuff dangling down towards the bottom. And so it's just a matter of getting the right texture and, and placing it on the right thing. So if I said, let's find a maybe scrap here. If I took something like this and then put it on there and said, oh, that's going to be like a little cave in the wall and let the bits dangle down. It, it will look like moss or whatever covering that cave. So that's the gist of it. Um, in this case, I just built and built and built until it got to a point where I like the, the texture. And then I drew back on top of it with colored pencil um, to get that sort of blue that shows up in there. But pretty minor. Nothing, uh, nothing 
crazy of any sort. Um, okay, so uh, this one I'm like, do I keep a sketchbook? No, uh, I do not. Um, I know plenty of people that do. It's just not my thing. I don't like having one book that contains it all. So oftentimes when I'm doing my work, I, uh, I will go and um, sketch any sketchbook, but then I just rip the pages out. So like the equivalent of even what I'm working on here was once in a sketchbook. It's the sketchbook is just, that's the way the paper comes <laughs> for me. It's not that it's some special sketchbook or anything of the sort. Um, and so it's a matter of just getting uh, the right type of paper. So I like drawing paper and because it comes in a pad or it comes in a sketchbook, um, that's the way that it, I end up getting it, but that doesn't mean that that's the way that it stays. Um, so if that makes any sense. Um, I just don't like the permanence of a sketchbook. Um, most of the time when I'm sketching for books and things of the sort, it is done in the iPad. And so it doesn't even have a book of any sort. It's a digital book. Um, let me just glue this to the back side as well. So it just becomes less of a problem. There we go. That's my son. Uh, let's see. Uh, and then uh, summer making art. What kind of use glue do I use? This is Elmer's all-purpose glue stick. Goes on smooth, acid-free, photo-safe, non-toxic. I buy um, giant. I don't even know how many are in that pack. Twelve packs of them, and I generally go through about one per painting. Um, it's a lot of glue, uh, and I specifically get kind that doesn't start out. A, or doesn't like start one color and then dry another. I don't want that that problem of having to worry about uh, is it going to tint or stain the surface because it dries or it goes to white, but what happens if it's pink and it changes the my perception of, of what I'm working on because it's bright pink to start. Let's see, I'm just touching up some of these. Textures. I'm gonna. I have this texture back here. I'm gonna throw some in some of these other areas too. But uh, Andy, I had a question for Flavia that I wasn't able to ask when I was driving. Did she happen to talk about our domestic? Of course, she did a little bit, but uh, not. We didn't really go into it deeply. Um, so, uh, Souffle de la Verte. Question: Do you use time on times oil pastel for textures or never? No, I'm basically just uh, paint and colored pencil for the most part for textures. And there's a cat. Um, it's, it's, I, I, one, I'm not good with oils in general. I like stuff to dry fast. And so if something doesn't dry fast, it is not in my arsenal. Um, and so most of the time when I'm drawing, it's, um, It's with, you know, colored pencil, uh, crayon, those kind of things, but not, uh, not oils of any sort. Uh, lion rabbit art. Howdy, Mark. Need to find time to doodle noodle. Uh, yes. Noodle is, is sitting around waiting, just waiting. Um, that was very, very, very nice of you to send uh, that last one. It was lovely, and we are uh, we are very excited to see that you put in the time and effort to draw our little stinky nail. Um, so let's see, get that guy yellow, bright yellow. Let's see, get that. I do need to touch up a little spot on there, but uh, hi from Spain. Well, hello from the U.S. Uh, A lot of people keep sketchbooks and do their final work digitally. Yeah, I do. That is weird that I do the opposite. Uh, yeah, Andy, just send her a message and just, you know, I'm sure she'd be happy to, to answer. Um, unless it's a mean message like, hey, I didn't like your course on domestic, which I know that you constantly are writing to people about. You're like, hey, I don't like your stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see, are there any other things that I need to do to this to 
to wrap it up. It's big. I wasn't intending to have something this big. But I do. That's my cat again. Okay, maybe that was my son. I don't know. Okay, and then let's do last little last looks. That was my son. My son needs to not knock stuff over. How about that? I didn't even. I I know you don't have to. It's okay. I'm just joking. About it. it knocked over. It knocked over itself. Yeah. Once I yeah. stepped down to the. Once I stepped down to the thing. I thought it was balancing, but I didn't know that that would be enough to shake it. To shake it that much. Okay, now it's time for some last little touches of color on things. Sharpen that up. Uh, Illustrator, not a problem. Thank you for for being with us this whole time. This is a colored pencil that is broken. Prisma colors don't ever drop them. Or else you will regret it. Let's try and get those fingers to be a little more pronounced there. And then. Should I put little doors on the houses, or is that crazy? I feel like that's maybe a little crazy there. I do see something else I want to do. Oh, you know what I need to do? There were some of these that were coming up, and I got groomed out. Can't have those come up. Okay, so here's what I was going to do, though. Come here. I was gonna square off some of these because I like I like this idea of that. How does this have you know, neat standard perspective rules? So like some of these will have if that doesn't make sense. Okay, let's see. I think we're getting there. Do a little more like this. Charlie, can you please not do that? Are there any other questions from folks? As I'm getting towards the end of all of this. Stop. 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 Stop.
stop. Okay, let's see. Is there any other little nuances I want to put in here? Where is this? Sort of little smoke building up from that. Maybe I don't. I'm just trying to think if there's anything I need to put here. Just a big ah. Uh, how's school year going, Mark? Uh, we haven't started up for the second semester. Uh, we're going to in another couple of weeks. So ask me again then. <laughs> then I'll be able to tell you. Right now it's uh. So far so good. I haven't had uh, the same craziness happen. So. I'm trying to figure it out. Should I have, uh, Andy, since you're watching, should I have the letters A A A A G H exclamation point run across there? Uh, what am I juggling right now? Uh, I'm juggling two illustration gigs, uh, that are for one for a podcast thing, one for a, um, a, uh, editorial thing for a magazine. I am uh, working on a gallery show and I'm working, or I'm supposed to be starting relatively soon. Uh, the artwork for a book, a uh, kid's book, um, and then uh, plan on syllabi. That's my goal in the next couple weeks. Um, so, what about you? Frankie's on my desk. For anybody that cares, that's my cat. Don't, no, don't get in the paint. Don't get in the paint. Get off my desk, please. This is the second time I've had to take you off my desk today. And I don't particularly like that I have to do that. Uh, oh yeah, because I like that idea of like, come in. Let's just see. I just want to see what happens if I put like a big G there. Uh, maybe I should actually like. I already take this color that I did the nose out of. And put up there. Or is there a better color that I have here? Let me see. Maybe the nose out of this one. Oh, I did do that. So. It's better to take basically like make it say uh, a few fun gigs, business I've been in a while. A good business. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. What could he be saying? Or what could that people in the house be saying? Who is it? Maybe this. Actually, you know what? Let's do this first. Let's get some color on it first. Like some pinks, some reds, and this orange.
Is someone making slurping noises up there? So would they stop? Fun times in the Hoffman household. Okay, so let's do this. Let's... Uh, curious about the choice to make the held house smaller in the background ones. Uh, that is a good choice. A uh, good question. Uh, you want to know the truth? It's because I didn't want to do a bunch of small ones on the bottom. <laughs> That's it. Uh, it's literally just a, that seems like it would be a lot of work. And so I just said, you know what? Scale doesn't matter today. That's all. Um, I wish it were some cool, like, this is my special reasoning that, uh, that makes it seem like I had some master plan, but nope. It's just me being lazy. My God. Sometimes you make decisions like that called, I don't want to spend the time cutting out every single house that goes there. It's, I mean, at the same time, why is his one finger longer than the rest of his, uh, the rest of his hand, you know, because it's silly and it really doesn't make that much of a difference, I don't think. If it does, don't tell me. I'm trying to get through this. Hopefully I can make this a good size for it to fit there. Let's see. This is where I said, uh, Is every house in the background a separate cut out piece of paper and what's wrong with you? Yes, it is. It's not that hard. But if I had to make them half that size, that would have been a pain. Actually, it's not the cutting out that's the issue. And it's not the drawing in the roofs that's the issue. It's the gluing it down that's the issue. That's when it gets difficult. So let's see. Who? Is in it. Let's see. There's an I. Who is Kitty? Don't make me have to take you off this desk again. You're gonna do it, aren't you? You're gonna just climb up on my desk. be a problem. Who is? Okay, everybody. Oh, sorry, I gotta get rid of my cap for a second. Who is? And then let's do I. And T. That's for you, Lauren. I don't know if she heard that or not. <laughs> Did you get it? It was pretty spot on, if you ask me. Oh, did I make that backwards? I did make that backwards. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. I made a question mark backwards. No one needs to know. We're all going to keep it a secret, right? 
Uh, oh, wait, okay, hold on a second. Okay. Uh, let's see. Green Girl Blue Planet says, if an art director questions scale, perspective, or other technical things in your work, do you debate it or just fix it? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a real good question. Um, generally, they don't question it. I'm trying to think if there's any time where they've... I mean, what, what they've questioned are some weird, like, lineup of angles on things. Where they're like, oh, that, you know, this is butting up against something or those kind of things. But for the most part, I've gotten it down where, like, that's not really an issue. Um, like, when I sketch, most of that is solved for the most part. But um, where I have had something, I'm trying to think if I've had something that was, like, very similar in the sense of, like, hey, we don't like that perspective on that. Um, no, I don't think I've ever really had an art director say that to me. Um, I think maybe it's just they know that uh, my stuff is going to be intentionally wonky and that the stuff isn't going to line up or, you know, that I guess maybe it's just, yeah, it's a known equation to my work and why fight it? Um, would I fight for it? In certain cases, I would. I would absolutely fight for it if it's, um, if it somehow is affecting the piece or uh, is going to somehow um, ruin my enjoyment for making. If they came to me and said, like, well, we don't like your style, uh, you know, like, well, then I would definitely question it and say, that's not cool, that's what I want to do, and therefore get out of my face. Um, but, I think for the most part, it's yeah, it's known. It's it's the equivalent of like there's some people who, um, their whole uh, mo with with making work is that it's going to be sort of uh, texturized or or there's going to be so much texture. And it's like who at a certain point like you can't get in the way and be like, well, I don't like that texture, um, or you can't futz over every little detail like that. So. I don't know. Yeah, it's a good question though, because I've never really had to have that sort of fight. Um, but would I? Yes, I absolutely would. If it meant the piece would be ruined. Yes. Get out of my way. That's what I would say. Let's see. Is there gonna be enough room for all of this? I don't know. I'll find out. If there isn't, I can make it smaller. Is yeah, it's gonna be tight. Then I need to move it up and up over this way a little bit more. Okay, so let's do that. Let's get this up over here. Not enough horizontal room for these letters in there. So, who? This is why it's hard, hard to do type in collage. I'm just trying to get it so it lines up in a manner that works. It's not always super easy. Who is and it? Once I get this locked in a little better, I can chop some of these pieces down too. And I'm going to draw a little black line that sort of where are we time wise? Ooh, 554. 
right up against it. We'll get this done and then we'll call it a night. This one's too long, so let's cut this S down. There we go. Okay, so I can come over just a little bit. Not too much. Just a little bit. Which means this T can come over. Oh, I just tore that T. That's okay. That's what glue is for. go. So get this guy up. We'll do it right there. Okay. There we go. So now it says who is it? There's something going to paint it. We're going to laugh. Door there. Okay, last things last. First things first, last things last. Let's get a little bit of water here. Clean up just a little bit of smoke from that up here. Okay, now we'll clean up the rest in Photoshop. But I think that will be it. Should I make a little line that comes down that sort of I probably should. I'm gonna let that dry. Hold on a second. Hello. Okay, I think that's it. That's it for the night. Um, so for those that joined me, thank you. Um, earlier tonight we had on uh, Flavia uh, Zitago. Okay, stop climbing up on everything. Um, had a lovely time talking with her about all sorts of odds and ends. Um, you can go back and watch this. I will post this uh, immediately after this onto my Instagram feed, and then uh, thereafter it will go onto YouTube. Um, I'll probably post that up tonight of some sort. It does take some time, so don't expect it to happen immediately. Um, the general uh, thing is it's going to be the same thing that was on here, but it gives you the option to start and stop and do all that fun stuff. Um, this is the sketch that I started with. It was just this face, and it turned into that. Um, it, I didn't want it to be so muppety. That's why it became a little bit more something other. It was primarily that nose. That was the issue. 
Um, so anyways, that's it for the night. I will see you all next week. Next week we have on, uh, I'm drawing a blank. Who's our, who's our guest next week, Lauren? We got like 30 seconds. Who's our guest next week? Is it Tanya? Yeah, Tanya Stephanie will be joining us. There we go. <laughs> so anyways, you all have a lovely evening. I'll see you next week. Good night. <laughs>